No, 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 start now. This year, start now. <laughs> Decision making has been made. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Random process. No, so you know this. We have like an audience <laughs> behind us here. This is very disconcerting. It's the webcam. The live stream. Oh, yeah. Her name is Rodi Gaye. So this is the new one? Yeah, well, she uh, went oh, yeah, yeah. 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 She was on the side. Yeah. And then she's a mother of four, four kids. Yeah. And then now it's the uh, no, Shake my chair. But we just smell about this one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So thank you all for coming. Some of us uh, are in Zoom since 9.30 in the morning. Because <laughs> we had a long meeting. Uh, so now we switch gears to another big topic which is uh, which is built together what we call an open innovation center. And most of you probably know the project. Who doesn't know about the uh, project? Forces Rica. Forces Rica. Um, so <clears throat> basically, uh, just short story, Cédric uh, Cosmo, some of the development of the pair. Economy. Economy, economy. economy. Um, they have somebody in the region here who uh, was interested in uh, innovation and fab labs. So she, uh, she traveled to Europe, she visited the, the, the fab labs in Barcelona, she visited uh, some uh, facilities in, uh, in Germany. And she wanted to bring this. Uh, um, Open innovation here in Quebec, basically, and she was trying to um, start a, a project. Uh, and then uh, we are also members of Cédric Cosmo because uh, it's in our house, no? so we, they help us uh, get some uh, uh, funding and do other things. So through these connections, basically, she discovered that uh, and we met her through other projects around the country. And then she decided that Sensorica would be a good candidate for uh, seeding this open innovation project. So she really likes the the model behind Sensorica, the open innovation uh, in the open body network, and she likes the idea of how you're coming system that we're, that we're working on. Uh, and she also uh, likes uh, the fact that we do have experience in building communities and, and um, we have known the community um, uh, around peer to peer practices and uh, innovations. So now the role of the SEDEC is to basically, like Mike put it, is to uh, invest in a catalyzer, which means get an organization that knows what they're doing and, and have a lot of knowledge in the field, and help them further develop this open innovation uh, So this is the partnership between us and, and the SEDEC Cosmo. And then we have, through our connections, we have other professors from um, HSA and from uh, INCAM that uh, uh, join the project. Uh, and they're mostly, so they're university professors, so they're interested in the model and they're interested to see how this is going and how this is getting implemented. And they're also interested in uh, providing services. So it's a long-term relationship with them. They, 
they want to use the this thing that we're going to build as as a, a living lab, and at the same time they would like to also uh, intervene and help us provide the services where it's a little bit demanded. So that is, this is how the project uh, Project D uh, started. So maybe I'll let you answer to, uh, I'll intervene after, I'll just talk about uh, the physical infrastructure that we're going to build. Uh, but yes, we'll present the motivation, what the center uh, would look like, vision, mission, structure, uh, governance, and so on. So we'll talk about this. So, I'll just put it away. Actually, I'm using some chips to get everyone to come inside. So, hello everyone. My name is Asher. I'm doing my MBA in Korea right now. And I've been in Kibbutz and Sora Dutch since May. Summer, I was full time, and I've been in well, part time since. Uh, September. And what I do is you know, I'm working on the model of Consorica, the open value network. We'll talk about that in a bit. And also, um, essentially, I'm studying how systems, how people collaborate, and try to create a system which is based on trust. So, can we be a system where people trust each other with their knowledge? And then, we, that's the way we can have a collaborative system and we can iterate together, go to the market with it, and then redistribute the revenue. Uh, so essentially, it, uh, mm -hmm. so essentially what, you know, the vision is that we're creating a marketplace for the future, or in other words, more specifically, creating marketplace for innovation. It's how do we collaborate together and go to the market faster. Um, yes, corporations do that. Yes, and there are centers that, we have that can help you, but what we're doing is uniquely different. And one of the things we're also doing is actually help you eat your green meal, right? and <clears throat> which is beyond what sometimes you get don't get those opportunities in corporations because <laughs> there are budget constraints or otherwise um, someone else. But the idea really is to empower people so that they can realize the one dream, realize what their innovation and that they want. <laughs> so, uh, just um, uh, and then we'll see how can this uh, two world, if you will, uh, are coming together and the Open Source Alliance, how can we collaborate together and make open source make sense? So, you see people are collaborating in various different ways. Okay, so people are sharing their houses, they're sharing their cars, they're sharing tasks. So, Task Driver, for example, allows you to say, you know, I need someone to, to put my you know, furniture together. Uh, you can publish that, and so okay, okay. I uh, built your idea for it for you, and I get certain rewards for it. So I think the key message here is you share your rewards. You share your house. You, there's an economic model by which someone accepts your your uh, your house and you uh, for your room that you're renting or your car that you're renting, and they give you money. For it. The question is, why why can't you do that same thing for innovation? Why can't you share innovation, our ideas, our labor, our prototypes, our our knowledge, and then get rewarded for that? And that way we can collaborate through the market faster. And still have um, the same economic sense. In fact, we do do innovate together. We are doing a lot of open source projects. There are uh, some of them uh, are very, very innovative. This is car was designed in three months. Uh, and a prototype that gives you 100,000 to gallon. Um, this process, something like this, takes to uh, five years and 100 million dollars. Um, and in fact, some of these open source hardware are commercialized. In fact, it's uh, estimated to be about a million dollar. Uh, revenue in revenues today. Uh, today as in 2014. So <clears throat> yet open source feels like we are volunteering. Feels like we are sort of doing it for benefit, yet not for and there are no monetary benefits that come from. Monetary benefits are important because we also have to bills to pay and you know. <clears throat> 
why is it not like this? So we all contribute, we figure out what what is everyone's contribution and redistribute the revenue based on what we did. And I think that's the, that's the essence of Sensorica is what we're trying to do, is figuring out a way of how can we all collaborate together without needs for these artificial barriers and then be able to evaluate our contribution and get the rewards for it. So here's a little uh, study case on what's going on today is the study academia. You have academic network and you have entrepreneurial networks. And what happens is this conflict of interest. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, okay. I don't know. Um, so academics need reputation, they need to do publication, etc., etc. Versus companies, they have more belief in intellectual property. Um, and what it comes down to is sort of this passion-driven versus profit-driven model of innovation. That causes complex like poor use of resources. Academic does have resources, have tools, they would buy things and they would keep it. And they would not let anyone touch it, even though they may not be using it. They publicly find it yet inaccessible. Um, it hinders uh, circulation. Um, I think the major problem is IT, IT gets sold. A lot of times, intellectual property gets sold to the companies is the intention. The only reason they buy IT is so that they can maintain a competitive advantage with the current innovation that they have in the market rather than actually trying to release something that's social society because it's not good for them. It's not good for the current market. And I think what intellectual property is doing from that to these practices is what is is creating barriers to collaboration. It's creating barriers to being not able to say, well, I can share my knowledge with you, get your opinion, and go to the market faster. And the primary reason is because people have this fear that if we, you know, if we, because we don't have mechanism, based on fear, we don't have mechanism to say, well, how do we actually commercialize if we don't have IP? Someone will copy us, and et cetera, et cetera. How can we create this? So the sound to be here, um, the idea is how do we put these two worlds together? We can have open source projects as well as non-open source projects in the same place. So we can both learn from each other. Open source communities are really good, are really innovative, and they can collaborate and be effective. Yeah, and on the other hand, corporations uh, are really good at marketing and going to the market with, uh, and commercializing products. Um, and how can we put these two worlds together? So that's the general idea behind Sanctuary. And what we're trying to provide is co-working spaces for people to come, uh, providing tools and fabrication lab, uh, matchmaking services so we know exactly, well, if you need certain uh, assistance with aeronautical or flying insurance, we have someone, okay, yes, we know someone can help you with this, etc. Et Hopefully in the future we can automate that. Um, accelerator and advisory service, a lot of the entrepreneurs, you have wonderful ideas, but what happens is or well, you don't know where to go, you don't have any marketing input, you don't know what the customers want, you don't know how to create value that is commercialized. Uh, and I think that's a big part of the problem is how do you get advice from that. And the last one is how do you, uh, it's integrated, which is to say, well, Samsung is one thing, but what about all these other uh, innovations that are going on locally and globally? So there's innovation, uh, open source products all over the world, people are contributing. And locally as well, we have academics, um, a university and so forth that are uh, doing research and innovation locally and they have access to resources and tools. Uh, and then you have corporations. How can we put it all together and create sense? Uh, so, so. I'll, uh, I'll continue on the model in a bit later. Um, so this is not just a one-way presentation, right? So, <laughs> so we, can, we can stop and, 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 we can and ask questions. We will have also a discussion period. We try to keep the presentation 15 minutes. So very and then, and then discussion, and then we have another, uh, another thing. Maybe we present something. So I'm just going to talk about the physical infrastructure. What do we want to put together? So the first thing that uh, 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 first thing this year, because it's as important as the other things, uh, it's a fab lab. It's a fab space. Um, it helps you to prototype and to do some small scale manufacturing. Uh, we're talking here about uh, CNC machines, uh, laser cutters, 3D printers, and it's probably going to be two labs because uh, uh, they they require different environments. One of them is dusty, and the other one is smelly. Uh, so so they probably require different, uh, <coughs> different environments. Uh, then on the list we have a gray space or a gray lab. Um, we have a concept of a clean lab or a white lab. Uh, where people wear suits to go inside, you know, it's dust-free. Uh, mm -hmm. A gray lab is something in between. 
It's for the grace. It's for the grace. <laughs> so, so the idea here is to keep the environment clean so you can do some some electronics. Uh, somebody wants to do uh, exactly packaging of of microelectronics, and we want to do all this. So we need to have a facility um, far from dust and smell. Um, Wet lab is something where you do some chemistry and some biology. And I'm going to point to people now, just to recognize them. So the Montreal Biohack group. Right. And for now, they don't have a, a space where they can operate. Uh, so they go here, there, they go to London House, and they make it smelly. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they do their experiments uh, here and there. So it would be nice to, to have also this group uh, and maybe this uh, here today because it's traveling, right? Yeah, either way. Either way. Um, so that would be a home for, for these guys to, to do their own, uh, own uh, DIY science. Uh, Green Lab, I'm going to point to Benoit and to the other guys here that represent the uh, Genie to Home. So the idea here is to start experimenting with uh, autonomous um, food production platforms, uh, indoor grow, growing of, of, of whatever kinds. No sound required. No? No, no sound, sound required. required. Uh, yeah. Uh, most definitely. So there are huge open source communities working on these things. Um, on uh, aquaponics, on um, the other one. What's the name of aquaponics and? Aeroponics. Hydroponics <laughs> uh, and aquaponics. There's aeroponics. There's a fish one too? Yes, one called? that's aquaponics. Uh, so, so there's also a market, a market value that can be discussed, uh, and and you know we also need a need a, a sort of a, a space for this project to, uh, to evolve. And the idea is to have uh, green walls. That's what we call the green wall project. So the idea is to integrate this, this lab, the green wall project, uh, within the architecture of the lab. So these are walls that will separate spaces. In, in, in the lab, but at the same time, they're lab in, in themselves. Um, robotics. Uh, so we have the drone guys uh, here. So we recently sort of thought about expanding the, the concept, uh, go from, from a drone group to a robotics group, because there are some people that feel that um, might be interested to join us to do some other types of, of robotics. These are students that work on the um, Moon project or lunar yeah, Mars, project. Mars project. That's Concordia. The rover. Okay. Space Concordia. Oh, that's uh, Space Concordia. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these students are also looking to have other spaces and they'll probably benefit from the hub uh, facilities uh, in there. And they also have their own labs. Uh, and what we also want to create is these bridges between academia and, and the group. So these students will come to do their prototyping and electronics. Uh, at, at, at the uh, <laughs> hub, and at the same time, some of the members of the hub uh, will have access to the hub. So it's also an exchange. Uh, and there's a great synergy between the green lab because they can provide snacks for all the other people. Of course. Double snacks. Basically, we forget the lounge space. Uh, and the green lab is going to be a boutique. We need a classroom, too. So uh, yes, yeah, so, okay. So office spaces, I, I didn't put these things, you know, like uh, yeah. meeting rooms and stuff like that. But office spaces. So we have ideas about how to design these, these office spaces so that we maximize interaction between projects. Um, so the idea is not to put people in the corner. It's just a picture that I took from uh, from the internet. Nothing to do with, with what we're gonna do. Uh, and obviously down here it's the academic labs. Um, we are already prototyping relationships with academia, with Philippe's project, and this is a picture of Francois and a student from Ecole uh, Polytechnique uh, working in a, in a lab, photonics, uh, basically lab that they're specializing in the fibers. Um, so again, the idea is that V is a hub with its own facilities, but then it's just a part of a wider network. And then you have students from academia coming to work in these labs, and then you have Entrepreneurs and other people that are part of the network that gain access to academia through these projects. Uh, so the idea is to share resources on a wider scale. Uh, but 
yes, to provide to provide a base so that people from academia get interested in the lab, uh, in what we're building, and by them gaining interest in what we're doing, they open the door for us. So it's an issue. Uh, and I think that's, that's my last slide. So, yeah, so <coughs> how does this open source and the open, interface with the open? So, I think, um, so what are some of the challenges in open source projects? Uh, funding, uh, those, um, access to equipment, being able to find other source projects, being able to meet certain people, uh, certain skill sets. Times usually they have enough resources, but at times it comes across. Uh, then being able to manufacture, being able to commercialize it. So if you do commercialize and you are able to go through the value creation process, then how do you actually uh, redistribute the revenue? Uh, and and uh, how do you collaborate? There's a lot of sort of challenges that come with open source projects. So, um, so what we're trying to do is, uh, again, this takes a long time to explain for how the source that works in its entirety, but we are trying to be that for commercializing open source innovation and redistribute uh, our <clears throat> So basically you have in center you have the community and you're free to join any of the files because they're all open for participation and open source. Again, you can work with the people depending on where your efforts and the, uh, your, your uh, contribution are required, etc. And you can have multiple brands within uh, within the particular network. Let's say you have a uh, sensor brand, you have Cactus brand, you have a uh, robotics brand, you have uh, there you go. Um, and so what you own is sort of essentially your brand name to be able to say, this is the standards that I abide by. So Texas Scientific, for example, is high-end scientific instrument. So if they're low-end scientific instrument, they might say, well, we can't use the Texas Scientific brand. You can go ahead and commercialize it however else you like and create your own brand name. This is what we exist for. We exist for open, like high-end uh, scientific instruments. And on the other side, when you are reaching the market, you, this is where the legal entry is coming. Someone can take on uh, responsibility. So generally, the whole idea is anyone can do any task if there is a need for it. And you essentially say, um, I'm willing, and this, this will be your contribution. So your contribution could be an idea, your project management, your facilitation between people, your coordinating, your networking, your managing tools, you're producing something, you're manufacturing, you're selling it, you're marketing it. One of them is also taking a legal liability for it. So let's say you want to take a legal liability, you can say I will okay take your legal liability as long as it's been certified, etc. etc. Well that's a contribution. And the whole idea is all these contributions go into bucket as you saw earlier in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the picture. And we redistribute it. So, and project would say, here is our algorithm, here is our um, certain value equation that we would use, and how we would redistribute revenue in that particular project. Well, and this is how we make decisions in that particular project. You decide on your governance, you decide on your value equation, you decide how you want to redistribute it, and then based on that, you can sort of work it out. Um, the good thing that we the, the the tool that we provide here is an accounting tool. So basically, when you do your contribution, you say this is what I did, and that minimizes description. That minimizes you say, well, here is all the things that I did, here is all the things that we did, etc., etc. And then based on those data, based on those contributions, you can evaluate and assess uh, evaluate the value of the project. So, so here are some of me. We have some sort of, we have other open networks, we have classical uh, uh, organizations that we part of some as well, and then we have academia and so forth. The, the question comes down to me is how do we interact all of the open source communities? Because the sort of does not want to absorb any of the other communities' identities. We want all of you to maintain your identities, maintain your brands, maintain your communities, etc. Et but find a way to be able to still be represented in a way that makes sense. So not, not all of us are individually going and negotiating our terms and conditions, et cetera, but finding a way so that we can all come together and be able to negotiate together, be able to take decisions together that require and that may have implications to overall only open source projects that are So we need a way to be able to do that. We need um, a custody. And so <clears throat> what we're here to do is say, well, we should all come up with what we want to do in terms of how we want to do it. This is not our project, this is your project, this is all of our projects. And this is all of our space, this is, we're all coming in together. We've been sort of leading the effort, trying to get people, people together, 
but that, that by no means we have no ownership. We want everyone to come out and say, okay, this is what I would like to do, this is how I want to participate. Let's all come together and say, how do we want to make decisions? How do we want, what entity should it be, what entity, what should it be called uh, in the center? How do we move forward? I think this is to all of us to decide together, and this is all of our project. We should go out, get the resources we need, we should go out and uh, and and build this home for ourselves. So this is why we like not, we it. Is there not one network, but there are networks of networks. So this is why uh, is this meeting was or meal was really important for you guys to come in and be part of the question, help us build this for us and for us. No, I'm saying it's good to leave that slide to leave it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So this is what we're focusing on today. So basically, this is what why we're here. How do we come together to interface with these other <coughs> entities that operate in a classical way? Okay, they, so we require an interface because we as open groups like Jam and Sensorica and I don't know how many people. We are just clusters of individuals that are, you know, crazy about some technologies and passionate and work together. We're not necessarily legal entities. Do we want to create a legal entity around us, or do we want to stay as a network? Well, then we need to interact. We need to find a way to interact with these things, and that interaction should not should not keep any of us out of the negotiation of the deals we can cut with with all these, these other partners. Okay, so this is what we are thinking about. So the discussion is open until uh, the last year, uh, and, and now we have technical questions. So let's hear the technical questions come, and then we can we can continue to discuss on on this thing, and we can go home and, and think about it, and we can do <laughs> so exchange emails. How much space do we get? Uh, yes. So. <laughs> How much do you need? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the question. So the so the idea, here's the idea. Okay, so we have a meeting yesterday with uh Jim from the Sedet. Um, there is the long track and the fast track. Okay, the long track is to wait for the Sedet and and with us to create this entity. And by creating this entity with its own governance, then we can go ask for funding. And Sedek is already negotiating with uh, building owners uh, that are interested in our project. Uh, this is going to take some time. How long? The, this can take years, two months, 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 months year. two to six. Two months to <coughs> six months. Six. At least. Yeah, well, seven, no. but, but the idea here is that that's a long time. It's a good long time. <laughs> <laughs> what is short track? Next week? <laughs> <laughs> the, idea, the short track is tomorrow. Okay, so can we tomorrow integrate our resources? Because he is the thing. The city is creating this, and we're going to ask for money. And the more potential you show, the more you get. Ah. We can start working together tomorrow. We decide how much you get. You do. Well, we can control how much we can ask for based on the components we have. And then, and then it's the people that fund the so project basically control the. Now, uh, my time was okay. Uh, so the negotiations are to be uh, with the building owner yeah. are going along, and over the next one we'll find out how successful they are. So if they're not successful, they will want to wait two years. Because the next building that they have influence over, from which they can actually go and get space for, will take two years. So yes, we can wait for another month to figure out exactly what's going on, but now and now, but that doesn't make you have to wait for two years. Is that the, the main church? Main right now is space. One of the main problems for us is space. The other one is equipment and the cost of equipment for buying you know, the physical tools. So have you guys, we had a conversation about this recently. Have you guys come any closer to the number? This is why we need all of your inputs. A number. A number what? What do you need? How much money? Oh, the money. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, well, to build, to build that space, we would need uh, 
Dancing with your daughter. Ask for seven figures. If not more. Ask for four and you'll maybe get one. Mm -hmm. So to get that particular space is a matter of negotiation with the building owner and his perception of how much potential do we have to fill up the, the whole floor. Yeah. Okay. And but, but what, what we can also do is basically use our existing facilities and grow the space. That's a fast So the select would help us in the meantime, you know, to put projects together, to get some funding, to get other spaces, you know, and these huh? and, and be sort of have instead of moving in right away, uh, it wouldn't have a sort of decentralized it wouldn't necessarily be centralized. Yes, it wouldn't so necessarily have a CNC machine over there. Yeah, yes. I was the city and the cleaning printer here. Yeah. And um well, now it would yeah. Yeah. That's that's it more about yeah. so yeah. step that's one cool. is get the space. Step two is get funding and figure out how to distribute it Well so get funding before the space also. As an example, we uh the, the, the green wall project right now, I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. Like the funding mm -hmm. very cool by the way also. Very cool, by the way. Uh, and the uh, it, huh? to bring the funds, so we can try to actually work in making a kind of prototype, something we can put to uh, creating uh, funds. Is it by how we name it? The uh, funds raising and the Kickstarter. I would like to. Prove that with zero dollars you can build everything. That's, that's my reason. Okay. Well, that's How to do is using Kickstarter. Nice. It might have no sense. I have time with a computer, but it's a little time. Computer, and I can maybe have other people do it. Zero can do it. So it that's one source. There's also also other sources. Everything is on the impacts, and that money is for me. So I have to retrieve that money with like select, which is my own. So that's a different source of the view that we have to pull on. Okay. Becoming expert to pull on that money also. Together it's going to be something possible, I believe. For people who would like to work in that domain. So if we work together, pulling money is one, one activity that could be done to activate some project. So pulling uh, money is a single entity. Hmm? Pulling money, you're saying pulling money as a single entity. Right. I mean, as a, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it should be a joint party. Some of the, no, it's, that's a sound, 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 it sounds very good, but okay. it's, it seems very complicated to actually work out mm -hmm. as to how to distribute funds. And no, but that's, that's the good stuff I feel about. Right. The idea is by project, mm -hmm. the need all about the same. They all need <laughs> money to start something. And the level is not the same for every other project, right? But of course, we need money. So the process of training and finding money to a certain point, and we're going to find different doors, where we can find where we need, and we're going to develop that. We have to develop that. So if people are interested to develop that. Of course, I have no choice to start somewhere. I'm going to do it and get a little bit. So we're going to develop expertise on that. This is one aspect. Money is just one aspect. So you're going to build a pattern and keep finding money. How much money and do you need? And sharing the money you need Those are, this is what you're saying. You want to find a pattern uh, for us to basically be able to find the money. Yeah. How much money we need or what we need it for, those are just variables. That's right. And one thing mm -hmm. is that everybody here are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. The last thing I'm going to create is job. Finish. That that word disappeared from my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. I'm not a job creator. Mm -hmm. I'm, an, I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, an entrepreneur generator. Okay. The idea is to make sure that each of us take their responsibility to make something happen. So that's a major change that we try to implement here. So it's it's entrepreneurial mentality that we have to start here to make things happen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
Well, it's a kind of responsibility and, and, and it's a great thing, but we need to, we cannot do everything. We are not balanced on everything. Sure. Uh, so I guess my, my big question is though, like centralized model, yeah. opposed to the, the, you know, the, the more really associated model. Uh, it seems to introduce a number of issues. Uh, I, well, I, 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 but you know, I think, I think this would be clear anyway, because there's so much momentum behind it. Okay, it's just not a matter of us, it's how we're going to wait. So you think there. that this will solve the problem of the centralized model? Of decentralized model? Of the, of the centralized model, this will solve the problem. Well, no, this is the centralized model. The value, the value, the value. No, the centralized in the sense that you have a centralization of resources. It's not required to solve the problem. The problem is already solved. You can't solve it today. <coughs> you don't, it's, it's, it's useful, but it's not essential. So I'd like to sort of point out. Uh, first of all, is what company were was providing still might provide what space and maybe some money for the okay. We still were already had this agreement that we were gonna try to raise the fund for rest of the equipment. Maybe start small, go big, whatever, however that was. Okay. And to be able to and we would have needed some kind of representation, like legal representation in some company, but for somebody is both what is for uh, corporations as well as non corporations. Their mandate is different. Now, and so we would have needed a cooperative or something to the effect that we all get to make decisions together, anyways. What changes here is not that we are centralized and centralized. I don't think that's the plan. It's just legal and just to represent us while we still remain ourselves, our networks uh, behind us. What changes here is what happens if this thing takes two years? We have a momentum, what do we do? Do we go home and wait for two years or do we say, okay, well, why? we can do it ourselves. Why don't we do it? We have 30 people, very capable, very entrepreneurial, able to take initiatives. We can do crowdfunding, we can do some capital raising, we can get, we have so many amazing good projects. I'm sure there is, there's demand for it, there's market for it, there's talented, we can do it. There is nothing stopping us other than our, I don't even know what. Nothing else. I, I, I agree. I, I think you know, you look around the room. There's a lot of passionate people involved in really interesting projects. I think if you give you know anybody a chance to see that, they'll be excited and they'll, they'll, they'll want to contribute and take what they can. But, uh, I agree. All right. So, um, mm -hmm. you said that there's a better decentralized model. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the negotiation is going on. It's, uh, I, I didn't get any bad signals. There's always, you know, I mean, there is no sign deal. That's, that's the thing. What if uh, we make an offer in terms of, let's say, how much you would charge for rent? We centralize our funds. And then, then you make a step front, like we're going to, um, what's it say? Yeah, it's the same. So, so he, he's, he, he's a technicality of the uh, little money. Yeah, the technicality of the uh, the technicality of the uh, negotiation is here. So uh, the SEDEC is negotiating fifty thousand, fifty thousand square square feet. Uh, that means the whole floor of that building. Okay. So the idea is not to get it from start. Okay. And the idea is to start small but have a guarantee that will grow. That's telling the owner, okay, we have a potential to grow. Is the owner a capable of taking that risk or no? Does he believe that this class of here has the potential to fill the process of making that case? So the process is also us showing that, so that build up, right? With the select showing that build up. So you have a show, of course, to the owner. And you have 100, 200 individuals show up with 20 different projects. 15 different projects, and everybody's presenting a fair of sorts uh, with this being effective. Yeah, yes, definitely. And, 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 but then, then also, you know, the, 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 within the negotiation, we are trying to say, okay, give us the space for free for you know six months, whatever, and pay for some reservations in the beginning. So now that is part of the, the negotiation. Okay. I think the question comes down to is, well, negotiate, we're negotiating for free for a while. It's sort of a pre premium model. We get free for a while and we get free. Are we ready to actually commit money to say, okay, well, if you don't get the premium model, we do get to have to pay from the very beginning. That's still a deal. But 
if we are if we do have to pay, then we have other options as well. So we're paying money anyways. We'll see where is the best option, etc. etc. So we have more options in case, well, if we have something like this and we pull resources together, maybe we can get a better deal, maybe we can go somewhere else, maybe we can see what the best option would be for us. So it kind of it's taking a step back and looking at it and saying, well, what does the community want to do? So we have to participate and mm -hmm. in that global document that's going to be presented to them as a better global project that yeah. would make more sense and becoming easier to sell open mind idea. Yeah. And this is for, again, for all of us. So it's not, yes, how much space do we need? What tools do we need? How much do they cost? There's a lot of research that needs to be done that, you know, we also would like everyone to contribute in doing that research as well. Within their own within their own, within their own project, within their own requirements, um, and then being able to integrate that knowledge. Again, working together to make this space happen. This is all of our space. We all have to work together to work. Is the, the building the building is it shallow right now or what? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. it's shallow. It's so it's a, no no it's not totally empty. They there are floors oh, that are empty. Shell. Okay. Yeah. Is that a? It's built. It's that empty. Yes. 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 So this is a good space, and the negotiations are happening now. How would it work for people to intervene to say that their projects would be a part of it? Like, how would this display to the people who are making the negotiations about the possibility of the project happen, especially given if the negotiations are ongoing right now? I think something like at least a letter of intent would go a long way. Uh, a letter of intent describing what projects we have. What do we need in terms of space? Why is this there any for us, etc., etc.? All of that stuff would help in the negotiation. And then the we are not at the negotiation table. Government select. So where is this building? Uh, Park and 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 but if you get the money, the funding would go to an entity, B, and they would sort of make this transaction. It's like the five or fifty years. We we let the SEDEC uh, because they have more legitimacy, like, and, and they know people, and you know. But the SEDEC actually. Are you negotiating for a fixed uh, square footage or are you just growing space? The whole floor yeah. mm -hmm. So the sample, so CDEC is shooting for the whole floor. Uh, what they want to do is say, well, here's the space for open source, and here are the rest of the space we've done right here for corporations. Their hope is we will sort of interact with each other, we will learn from each other, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you, then there's also but we're not at the negotiation table. The problem is just a guy is from Toronto and he's, he's thinking in Toronto prices, you know? <laughs> and uh, now he realizes that like, oh, my building is going to take a lot of value and I have to charge more. <laughs> um, so if you chose, like, if you were looking at a different space, it wouldn't be within the SEDEC project? We would have to take a step back because okay, we so see where we're at. We want to go on the side together, where would be the best space, what would be the best price, what's the biggest part for our uh, but it doesn't mean that the SEDEC is not our partner anymore. Okay, that's, that's so the they, thing. like, this is what I'm wondering, like, are they trying to rent this space and then you would say we're going to take it to somewhere else, or you would still be partnering with them and going somewhere else? We would like to partner with them for a couple of different reasons. <laughs> First one is they are connected, they have resources that they could fall in. They can make connections with other networks, like academic, etc. I don't think what we're trying to propose is not to go away and run away from the corporate world and sort of from the closed world. Is to be a part of it and show and change that as well in mentality. So I guess my question is just like if the if there's a possibility that it would take two years that this I could be pursuing that, are you talking about possibly finding another space for the two years and then rejoining this? Like if they're opening this hub anyway, I'm just a bit confused. Right? It's for us to decide. Yeah. Uh, one more possibility is this building. Uh, which yeah, was, this is something that they have negotiations with already. So this is uh, yeah. the yeah, so there is, as rooms open, they can give us what it would be sort of like ideal space that we would like. If you sort of decentralize, maybe we'll be limited. 
the space where it runs. Uh, yeah, the there's a 20,000 square foot beside. That place across the overpass is shutting down in two years, a year or something like that, so it wouldn't be. Why is it shutting down? They're making it to condo yeah. or something like oh, that. Oh, it's at Ben Sol? No, yes, it's, it's, but there, but it's, there is yeah. something to the fact okay. that that's why they were not able to. Right. So that, but uh, maybe it could be in the between. So that, uh, if the yeah. other space is yeah. in two so years. You, you about it. So the, the next space that Sudan will be able to arrange that will be big and centralized, if you will, would be in two years. That so that could be. It's not a certain thing. It's not a certain thing to hear. If this doesn't work, that's <laughs> If this doesn't work, okay, this is not outside of something that's still very likely. This is other us. But the. the the problem with that space over there is that because the university is building up, oh, yeah. they're seeing the level of money they want going up, and it's going to be very difficult in time to negotiate because it's going to get just worse. Mm -hmm. and, and also, Sedec uh, is uh, Rosemont. Yeah. 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 And you have to be in Rosemont to be with them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, six, and 63,000 is in Rosemont. Is it? It's, it's, it's a lot yeah, space in Rosemont. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what Park was the. No, the last bit of this sort of. That's no, a lot. That's the the limit is the track to the other person. Oh, yeah. Because just on the other side of the track, so, so I, I oh, visited oh. the. Yeah, like. Uh, where a uh, moment factory is, there's like a yes, the massive, space. massive space. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the there's, ground, a, the there's a complex history behind it. They wanted to make that space into a residential area, but the city wasn't allowing them. So they decided to say, fuck you to the government. And then now they're essentially not selling it, just holding it. They're just waiting on They're just waiting on it. They don't, they don't have any intentions. And that's the crappy building owners. Are you considering the Bargaining chip that might be in that building. Yes, that's exactly what we are. Yeah. Now, uh, Jimmy, I, I want to come back to a thing. So, we can dissociate B from the SIDEC. Okay, B is not the SIDEC. And, and the SIDEC is very supportive of what we are doing. Okay, so the SIDEC really would be partnered with us in any case. They would provide us with services, with help, and even help us generate some funding even before. They will really, really like us, whatever we do before, okay, to go with it. Because they really believe in our love. Okay? So uh, actually they're kind of scared that we're you know, moving away. We're, we're impatient to, to grow. Actually Jean-Bierre here was saying, guys, I don't know, like you are in the commercialization phase, I have the feeling that you need uh, production capacity. And they were looking for space, you know, so she was kind of trying to assess how, you know. Um, these governments are fast, right? Hmm? These completely governments are fast. Yeah. Big piece. Uh, partly, not completely. Not completely? No. Well, to start, yes. yes to start, but not, to start. But not uh, for life. And yeah, it's yeah. very important for Sedek. They just want to have started the benefit in the economy. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. starting for three, four, five years, they say, and they must sustain itself. So that, that's the uh, Yes, to start with yes. Uh, also well, there. I, I wouldn't say fully, I'll be careful. We might get space, but not whole equipment, maybe some equipment that's still very negotiable. Well, depends on how much money you'll be able to raise. But the other thing is that the SEDEC, if we go all together independently, it will be 20, 30 independent project. Mm -hmm. If you do that together, it, it's either you have an entity and they're going to fund that entity. Or it's 20 different projects and 20 different demand and analyze. So basically, we were talking about should we, should, should the, when we ask for funding, should the money go to this entity or should the money go to this entity? And Jean-Pierre from the SEDEC, she was basically saying, why was it so to take the money from this entity? Take the money. But no matter what. Because they don't want to be part of this. They just want to facilitate. The SEDEC doesn't want ownership on any of this. No, go ahead. Right. Talking about uh, money, I was at uh, like a meeting at uh, Rosemont uh, Petite Patrie at, at the CEDEC where, where there was, there was yeah, a presentation. Uh, yeah, there was a presentation about like what kind of help they could give to uh, like, organizations, and uh, uh, they had um, yeah like sponsorship or whatever. And uh, I think the, the question is, uh, would we have to go through those uh, loops basically, or? If we say okay, we're that many and we need that much money, 
they're going to say yes, or do we have do we have to go through the, the actual process? The, the actual no, process? it's just a bigger thing than just an individual enterprise small thing. Because the, from what I've I've seen, I'd say like there's uh, not much money to no, 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 yes. to. It's just a small yeah. enterprise starting. Yeah. They just have to start. Uh, so pretty much so. all all the money you can get, you've got a uh, front uh, as much uh, yourself. So yeah. I mean, if we want to get. This would be a different deal. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so that means we get like a fast uh, track or something. Well, right. so that's the next thing from that perspective is they're helping us coordinate to go. So they go on our behalf saying, hey, this is what we're doing. So they're going to Medavaya, they're going to Mark Cross, they're going to the Ministers, asking okay. them for money. For so this is yeah, okay. for this project. So, so this is not so money that's in their hand. Okay. Some of this, so Project P actually Snack started to think about even before the Nexus work. So they were already doing some uh, capital, uh, um, raising capital for it. And so there is already some capital that they have for Sansomi. But again, Sansomi, for them, they cannot just open it, they cannot just make it for open source or review it for open source, open source etc. And so this entity here would not get the money that is this entity would. But no matter what you do, you need a central entity to negotiate the commercial of the business yes. and the all of the entity that participate in that. Yeah. Yes. So you need a bridge. We, we, we need this. It doesn't matter how we do it. I, I don't. Maybe there are other people who are lawyers who have the expertise. Well, you matter. could do it like a office lawyer, like a, everybody is part of it and owns one. So it's going to be so with that. So, uh, so. um, yeah, or you can do a commercial. Models, the different models, we might have to get legal help to see what would be the best way. Nonetheless, we do need some legal entity there, whatever form or shape that it takes to be. And this is actually precisely where the city can help us, is to mount this thing here. The entity. Yes, yes. because that's, that's well, within their range of expertise. They, well, they help you. Who's going to own the entity? Now it's probably yeah. 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 Yes. And um, by uh, uh, the way they want to do it, it's a legal entity, mm -hmm. and it's a commercial entity. Yes. A cooperative is different. It doesn't commercialize products. Okay. Now, it's just the entity. It's just the infrastructure space. space okay. That's the same ground. It's the group. Going back to the uh, previous model, it's going to be the responsibility of each enterprise. Each project can decide the, uh, how they want to commercialize it. Maybe one entity would form the future. They would say, I want to take on these particular commercializing projects, etc. Et it's free market. Yeah. It's free market. We decide. And if we decide in the future, we do want to centralize that, that might be possible. And then whichever way the people using it want to use it, it's really up to them. Yes. But I think it's, it would be good to go further. And Sorry. it would be good to go further than just to share space and to have really an entity that will be able to commercialize whatever come out from the lab. Because uh, commercialization is very, very, uh, it's a, uh, it's a job by itself. So one thing that we've been building expertise on and how to commercialize open source projects, we've been trying to sort of yes. think about that. This is this is a to do like to share with people, like to tell them how we can go about okay. doing that. Uh, both legal entities, brands, etc. We can okay. we would like to provide that expertise and help move along, but I think that's a longer conversation. Yes. Or not for now. It's likely like but not uh, uh, kind of Enterprise and future data, where you start a business and you have all the service all around you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want a secretary because you can't offer that salary, but you can share. Yes, exactly. For administrators, same thing for accounting, for everything. All the stuff. So that's that's making possible to start a business yes. this way. It's a part of this function, but it's not only that. It's more than that. That's that's the thing. We're starting with an open source model also. Not from a great <laughs> business. Yes. It's open source business. That's where it is. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We can have another session later on at some point to talk about how we commercialize work. Some of our research that we've accumulated over a long time. A lot of it has been written out, you can also send it to everyone for us. Pretty much.
So we can continue the discussions on this. Okay, you have a question. Yeah, so what's the sense of the involvement of the SEDEC of Bull's Law? Uh, are there other SEDECs that will be involved, or it's... Uh, no, it goes by territory, so we're in Osmo, there's only one. But, but, but they do have, they, because, because they were strategically, because the initial idea is to move in that building, that is strategically positioning positions between three regions, okay, the idea of the SEDEC was to co collaborate with, with the with the with the, uh, no, with the uh, CLZ. Uh, Park extension and the other one of the Yeah, but Outramont, it's CLD 3 Outramont, right? No, it's not Outramont, it's CLD 3 That's the name of the CLD for Outramont. Yeah, Westmont, Outramont. Yeah, so the idea is to create something to create more and more. No, it's to create more Royal, Outramont, and Westmont. But it's the same thing that we're going to create, the porter of the project. I would say... Yeah, yeah. Um, so now we have a question. Are there any questions around that? Uh, comments? Because I want to finish on the presentations and then we can, yeah. we can have this. I just want to finish the. So, what are our next steps? Then we can classify. Or we can move on because the next one. What are our next steps? Um, Finalize the number. How much money do we want? Okay. But we need to know the project. What should you need to know? Who's yeah. in it? No, 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 but the project and what do you need? Maybe each of maybe them, maybe technology and commercial, should, everything. Maybe we should look at what these people need that are facilitating for us, okay. that are doing the negotiation on behalf. Yeah. Have them tell us what is going to make their life easy. What do you need from us? So I'm not sure. sure. Yeah. What are you going to show us? Ideas? Business See, so what do you need? One thing, that, so there's two things I need. The first one is number, mm -hmm. how much money. Second one is what is, how does it add up to that? And what are the different projects, et cetera, et cetera. So if every project can give us, let's say, a good estimate of matter of intent, what is the project about, what the detail, the details, um, whatever you can throw in together, can equipment. You, can you get all stuff. this data? Put it together, create a form, so to speak, right. or a package that everybody can fill out. Yeah. Uh, that way we make sure that, you know, maybe I'm going to miss some information mm -hmm. that some of these guys are going to have, and then in the end it's going to face some problems, and there's lots of back and forth. We don't want that. Excellent. Thank you. Don't do this plan. That's what we want to so, so this is precisely. Yeah, we'll put it in. Or we need to agree upon the timeline. What's up? What's up? The timeline are you funding? For? Yeah, we we need uh, to do all this before end of January because we need to go and ask for money and then we'll generate the server our timeline. Yeah. So 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 listen, because we have been putting in place these mechanisms well, with the uh, feedback from the city. So this is how these documents were created. So we have a list of equipment that is getting populated by other groups we're talking to. Uh, and, and that was the, the initiative of the SEDEC, give us a list of documents, or a list of equipment that, that, that you need and that you bring in the space. So this is how these things were created, right? Uh, so there is a process already in place. For the new ones, there is a process in place. Now, this is uh, the list of projects. And basically what I'm trying to tell people here is that Describe the project very rapidly. Um, show an economic uh, uh, value, you know, yeah. value, and then also describe the synergy between your pro project and other projects. So we want to show that individual projects are economically viable, but more than that, if you put them together, you get something larger. Right? So you can put what you're going to share and what you're going to be specific to you. Uh, that is in the list of uh, resources, let's say. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So this is so once we have this list here with equipment, actually we spoke about that yesterday. So uh, this list will go into okay, now we have the equipment, uh, how much it costs to maintain, mm -hmm. okay, uh rent, and so we will make a budget basically. Uh, that, that's the next step. But before we need that, you know, what, what are we taking care of? Right? I give a little tip for the interior design background. As you're populating that spreadsheet, that equipment marked down the size of physical footprint. There you go. Physical yeah. footprint is here. So that'll, that'll be the conservation. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 
if you could end up with uh, 100,000 square feet required and you're only negotiating one floor. <laughs> I'll have a job that's to be done by the each of us somewhere. So, so we have so uh, three weeks uh, talks. Sure. Yes. yes. So yes. So everybody needs to uh, have their stuff filled in by next week. Please. So that we have uh, two more weeks to go back and forth on whatever is missing. That is, that is my own goal, because last time I met the director of the SEDEC, he said, give me something by the end of January, because I'm, in February I'm going to start knocking on this. Well, we better give him something. So, <laughs> these tablets would be very, this is very uh, helpful knowledge sharing. These tablets and then understanding what goes with cash flow and how to yes, this, this are open. how to plan properly. So if you have a peek on, 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 on doing that kind of calculations, you know, if you have the data, so you can actually come up with that. Or have us come up with I have. I love some people. So I'm so afraid that I will be sharing oh. so I add to that. Mm -hmm. So to, to make sure that we have, you know, I thought, and some, some of them are those tools not going to be located just necessarily in the same place. All right. And so, yes, but we'll see. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a new solution that we have to think about based on the reality we are actually. And, uh, and eventually we're going to have that place and we're going to be able to move that stuff there. So for now we, we can start. Uh, regardless, the equipment is not central at the same spot. We can already log the information and say this is available. It's at home, but somebody needs it, so I can write it for you. So so just, just, just one question. So so now there's a point where there's a request for people to participate and to mm -hmm. do things. Okay. Uh, perhaps to have some of a or to be uh, all going in the same direction. Uh, perhaps explain from the people that will be funding, what, what are they looking for? You know, what's their objective? What do they, they want? <laughs> exactly. So we have the list of uh, sources of financing here. So uh, here, if you click on all these links, uh, they tell you exactly what they're funding. Some, some of them are funding equipment. Some of them are funding business cases or projects. Um, some of them are funding uh, academic research. Uh, so there's a whole variety here that we have identified, uh, and and every every um, let's say, request for funding it's going to be customized for for these things. But we're going to be feeding data into these things from the end documents, the equipment required, and the projects to make to make the case. The main, to the main sort of sponsor of the SEDEC, the whole small like. In two years from now, let's say they go to, to their bosses and they say, hey, with a huge success, we succeeded in doing X, Y, Z. What is X, Y, Z for them as a success? Does it mean that it worked and this created a bunch of jobs? Does it mean that uh, there's more innovation that's, that's measurable? Does it mean that there's, it's not necessarily a money figure, but it's visibility? Especially if my successful but, business but case. My, my so the question is, what are the next goals? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, my, so actually, my from what she say, she's thinking about metrics of success. Is there a professor? No, but the, they never told you about what they are expecting from us. Like, so what, what it's a project in itself, so they're going to find, they're going to come so up with some metrics. So they didn't say, like, we need successful we, business cases. I, so, I love that. From that side. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> the way that we make success of open source network right now is the level of collaboration. Okay, so that's still, they're going to figure out a way, and some academics are working on how to go about seeing what are the metrics of the internet. <coughs> but their metrics are not really jobs, they're not really business cases, they're not metrics. It's the level of collaboration. And now that could be measured by how much innovation is coming out. I don't exactly know how they're going to go about measuring that. But that was the vision that we're going with. The software circle that we saw. The vision for them is to create entity that will create that will create possibilities for collaboration. So they're measuring their success by how how successful we were in creating a collaborative yeah. environment. It's just because worried that they don't have false expectations because they've been checking for something one and we as a group delivered something else. Well, no, and they, 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 the they, they they say this was not successful. But the, the reality yeah. here, Ivan, is that Joseph specifically was looking for months for metrics of uh, mm -hmm. success okay. and for how to evaluate other fab labs because she was looking for the best model to implement the contract okay. and she couldn't find it. The reality is that everybody is uh, uh, working on building these open innovation facilities. 
Toronto wants one. Paris is building one. In Europe, I mean, every big city in Europe basically has, has one, right? Uh, so, so there's a hype, and, and the cities are sort of scrambling how to do it. There are projects at the University of Montreal, the Mosaic project, that they want to build this open innovation space. So there, is, there are no metrics yet. Everybody wants to build one, and other cities wants to find a way to build before the other city. So there is a sort of competition between Montreal and Toronto, you know. So everybody's rushing to build one, but nobody knows what are the metrics yet. Because it's it's kind of new. Yeah. But we can kind of figure out. Sorry, you had a question. <coughs> yeah, I just wanted to know what the, is the unifying like uh, like nature or identity of the groups that have that are participating. Like what makes it a group? You know, okay. Like what, what makes, makes one? Sorry. Like looking across like the various that you have in this chart. What do you feel is like the unifying identifier that would make all of these things naturally come together? Like who would be outside? of this project. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's anyone outside of the project per se. But, okay, uh, like this like one here will... represents, for me, personally, open source. Okay. okay. And so anyone that's not open source would be outside of this. Or... This, on the other hand, represents open source and intellectual property coming together and collaborating together. So anyone who is not part of this could be part Anyone can join some to be as long as they're innovating, etc., etc., and they will have their own way of being able to determine, uh, for example, uh, how much space you get. And they will charge rent um, uh, for certain spaces that will be part of some to be able to operate them. Uh, that it's, and now the plan is to make it into an out-of-pocket cooperative so that this entity can still interact, etc. Et but the reason to create this is, is specifically open source. Okay, so I guess, yeah, I'm just I'm just having a bit of confusion because well of the nature of Jam. Um, what? Because for us it's like we don't need money for our projects. We need space. We need some other things, but exactly. we're yeah, not, sure. and we're not generating a commercial product. So I'm wondering like what. But you are generating really value because it's only because you link us with yeah. the food industry. Yeah. To the green wall. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying so, that there's no links. I'm just interested in how. Like how it's, it's been. Yeah. In, innovation doesn't mean just the doers. It also means a lot of other things, like people who help you open the market, people who help you connect with uh, far, uh, yeah, farmers, for example, in your case. Or there's so many different ways of incorporating value and generating value. It's not necessarily people who are doing it. What's the membership card? You know, is it that you're an open value network? That you're open source? What is the actual? No, you can be a company. And that's me through some of units. Or you can be an open network and ask the same So if you're collaborating with someone in the group, then you're. If the more we can remember, you're in on my So the way you do it is if you're collaborating with Sisorema, you contribute to all you can and it's just open source. If you become a member of JAM and JAM is part of that circle, you're in. If you so there's got to be, I mean, I guess, some sort of constitution of sorts. Uh, something that, that all organizations are agreeing upon uh, as, as their values and something that they share in common, right? Open source. That's open source. Is that what it is? is, is, is <laughs> I've never defined what open source is. I'm right. sure it's clear and right. 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 But, but I think it's actually the point here. Uh, access to physical resources. So there, there, there will be an. an we are working on this, but we invite you all to work on this. So there is a, a system for management of physical resources. For example, in that space, you have a microscope that costs fifty thousand thousand dollars. Who has that access? To? Okay. So yes, there will be access cards to specific equipment based on your affiliation, your role, your skills. So there's going to be, you know, a system in place that you can you can get almost. The access to the working space, okay? Uh, but are you going to be able to use that microscope? So depends on the project you're working on. Depends on you know who you're affiliated. What is you know your why is this maybe not necessarily you? <laughs> yes. You have access, uh, yeah. but not use it. Yeah. The competency that I can take with. I just want to like that. Let's say we have a machine shop. But I have this number in mind. I don't have this. But I have pictures. A million machines. Music to you. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I know because you risk to, you know, 
Cut a finger. Cut a finger, whatever. So mm -hmm. they, if they have to have access to the competent people there with the card, competency, that's where we're talking about skills. Skills has to be, you know, all those details, you know, has to be taken in charge to make sure that we have able to start to do what we do and their competence and, 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 and sharing, sharing the problem with the other and their companies. But, but it's not like, it's not like knocking on the doors of a corporation here and say, hey, can I use a machine? It's not the same thing. I mean, perhaps you can gain access by getting trained on it or by joining the project. That yeah, has but you can have some, maybe you have a piece of uh, equipment that has a spare AI so, and they're multiple companies that need it. Multiple what is the guy in this group? Who's going to have it? Last qualified so, people. Yeah, that's another question. That's another question. Another question. Another question. Uh, yeah, and, and so and this is mathematical. Simple. We've been sort of pondering these types of questions for a long time. Some of us have been pondering for sort of four years, pondering for six months, eight months. Although we have a lot of guidelines on how to manage open projects, open source projects. How do you manage resources? How do you manage? How do you commercialize? How do you make it fair for Sorry. everyone? How do you make decisions? Feel free to use them. Feel free to repeat them. Uh, there is a lot of good information out there and answering a lot of those questions. Mm -hmm. So we would like to share that knowledge so we can all learn and see, well, yes, we agree to this, yes, we don't agree to this. Yes, I think they could talk, we thought it's okay. So there are thousands of questions that come along. The other thing that comes along is, well, hopefully, you want access to these resources, or all of these. What happens there when you have to go to that lab? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you move into that lab. You can't send everyone in at one time. Okay, you need that. They might have restrictions, and they might come and use our tracing. So we want to have the synergy. So how do you manage that relationship? How do you manage that synergy? That becomes very important. This is the expertise we've been building for a very long time, and this is what we would like to share. So, yeah, and that's that's great, but it it seems to me that at some point, and it would appear to be sooner than later, uh, that the organizations involved have to agree upon some sort of guidelines for moving forward. Yes. As, you know, you guys, I understand you guys have spent a lot of time thinking about this. Uh, you guys have quite a, quite a bit of knowledge on, on human systems, but uh, it, it seems like a pretty big roadblock that needs to be addressed before any real traction can happen. Yeah, it has to be put on paper as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. So, what, I, I mean, I, I would assume that you guys would be the one to take a point on this and maybe initial proposals in the same okay. community. <laughs> Right. Yeah, so, we also need IT infrastructures for that, you know, for resource management. Yeah, so for resource management, for a value accounting system that we have, which is to say, well, I use this person's contribution as you know, or this person's and role to create this particular product and event and sold it. Well, I'm mean, we just use right to you because it's your product, I fixed it, intervened it, changed it, went to the market. But what was your contribution in that particular part, for example, using this? Event. So how do you reach through the revenue wall? Well, there has to be governance around that. So how what do you do with people who don't pay you back? Because you what again what you want to do is maximize collaboration. How do you make sure that there's minimum level of friction between people so there is no burnout? No one says, ah, this place still has to burn, etc. Et 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 so how do you manage that? These are a lot of the questions we would like to answer. It's they're not perfect, there's a lot of gaps, there's a lot of human errors, there's a lot of negotiation that we will still need to do. Um, we have written certain things like constitutions that you're talking about that we need to integrate, what kind of um, legal frameworks you might need, um, still need more work on it, um, what kind of infrastructure, uh, virtual infrastructure you would need, um, how would you deal with reputation? So, for example, if someone does burn you, what do you do with that? Uh, a lot of questions. I'm just trying to get a sense of, uh, so I, the way I see it in the you have lift bubbles, so that you have these, all, these projects or these entities, and all these projects see that there's a value to be collaborating and to be part of this network or network of networks. How many like entities are we talking about? Is it like 10, 15, or 20 to 50, or closer to 100? Free market. So? Free market? Do you mean right now? Right now. Right now. Oh. Okay, so everything that we have, I, I have identified here, uh, these are personal connections, uh, people that know us and we know them. So you have all these parties, so for example, Greenwald, Home, Intelligent Beehive, Jam, Industrial Kitchen, um, Hyperspace is a group from review, local food systems, is, uh, okay, that's just an infrastructure project, but uh, uh, it's very close to Jam, uh, biohacking, the guys there. 
So these are these are just the projects that most of most of these are. So this is what we have now, like core projects. So very quickly, it could be done. Core projects. Like Correct. every one of those projects already is in contact with one or two others, which would be fan shows. That is. So, but sorry, then there's Sensorica that has all these projects. Which would be how many? Like a dozen? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. So because there's there's we talk about the, the fast track and then you know two years, six months, and I think that there, there's even without the, the building, which would cost whatever, there's huge value by just networking with people. Even there's no physical space. And when you get into discussions about like the constitution, I like the question like what, what's the commonality? And I can see that that could get tricky, but it's much trickier if people don't know each other. So very quickly, if there's more the, the network effects yeah. of all the subgroups that have you know more important potential to connect, if that gets along faster, uh, when the time comes for the more difficult things like okay we we wanted two million, we got 1.2 million. How are we going to separate if people don't know each other? It's going to be tougher than it if there's already that trust. Mm -hmm. So we have to start with thinking that we know, nobody knows nobody. We have to start with that thinking. I don't know you, you don't know me, nobody knows me. So that's how we trust each other. That's the only thing this one. So if we design something in that person, we have to we have to trust. Have to we have to trust. But I don't know. <laughs> no. That's why I brought the beer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little like if you've each other. Sort of. So, uh, who needs office space? We have a couple desks. Yeah, you have a desk in our office now. You can I need a lot of office space. Uh, just one. One each. <laughs> Every project gets a desk. Yeah. So, to answer those questions, but we will, I think, need to move really yeah. fast on this. Issues like how do you collaborate, etc. Mm -hmm. There are certain documents that are that will give you pretty good general guidelines without going into the nitty gritty. Pretty fast. They can start reading, see how you can get it, etc. Et and then there's detailed, 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 detailed documents. Somehow you'll have to combine them together into some kind of rules and regulations for the two registries. Yeah, the uh, constitution. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, and then just basically what open source like constitution is <laughs> somewhere also because it's in the constitution. Um, and what uh, you know, open source will really mean that when we put an idea in the box, this idea is now shared by everybody, and and I can have access also to that. That's what it means for me. Maybe yes. It's, maybe it's not a perception. I know, but it's and, but, uh, open source. And I get like uh, the, the, the software that was uh, huh? yeah, 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 maybe you know, or uh, yeah, Linux. 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 Each time you add something, the thing you add makes you a part of it. So two part to be a part of it, you must participate, and one you participate. Yeah. So last question here, I'm sorry, because Jamie has a. Uh, Presentation after very interesting stuff. Um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to raise an issue which I think is like central at least to Jam, which is like the issue of diversity and inclusivity. When like when a network is open, is like, but how can we open it further? Like we want to be really innovative. Mm -hmm. Bringing in different voices is really like super important, and especially like if the building is right there at like Park Extension and and Rosemont, how will the build like how will this space be responsive to the community that it's in as well? So that it isn't necessarily just contributing to the gentrification of neighborhoods that are already gentrifying pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I think it's really essential. Well, I think what, what, one thing that uh, what, one reason I'm interested in the project is the the Fab Lab uh, part, and I think I'd like this uh, space to be like open to the community, we basically not be uh, just a tool that we share uh, inside the building, but the like, uh, tools that are made available. And I mean, I think that's probably similar with the, the, your uh, yeah. idea of the lab as well. I mean, it's to be open to the community, not, not just the... Yeah, but when you're the, like the public, you know. yeah I mean, the local, I mean, uh, people living yeah. locally or in Montreal. But or there's, there's like, you can be open to the community, but there's also a need to be responsive to the community to try and find out what the community would want from a state instead of just providing what you have because then you're like playing on the skill sets that are present as well. 
So I'm just wondering how that can happen. Um, no, we didn't have any feedback. We didn't have any feedback. We don't have any feedback. I mean, it's something to think about. Yeah. Um, one of the ideas was uh, uh, working with local government here too. Uh, so have kind of some kind of a immigration integration program into built into the system. So let's say, which is something that I about to talk to you about, which is, well, when new immigrants come in, how do we integrate them? Well, because a lot of them are very skillful, very talented, etc. Et you know. There is so many people we can teach in program needs to be there of some sort. So let's say if you open, someone comes along from outside, doesn't have engineering skills, so maybe we can tell them how to use the tools, et cetera, et cetera, the training. Say they say if they go and go with a company later on, they can do so. So there is a lot of opportunity to be able to be community responsive in terms of teaching and training would be one of the aspects, for example. But they, we can go above and beyond that. I feel like for people to feel comfortable in a space, there's a need to integrate them into a project as, as early as possible so that there's a sense of ownership. Um, but yeah, now you well, I'm just wondering, like, I know I had talked to you guys about maybe doing a presentation at Wayne Hickson in Park yeah. Extension. I'm wondering if the project's at a point where it would be ready to do that. We've been quite to do that. Yeah, but I just think, like, for to my mind, it's like it's in a really super important thing to find the time for. It. Like, it's a real priority if you okay, want to be yeah. The other way that uh, you can accelerate that is to do a um, committee that will work on specifics mm -hmm. and then put that all together. Basic idea. But, but because if you're 20 trying to uh, put a, uh, like a combined chart together to have an organization, like a legal one, well, 20, uh, you'll never get nowhere because it's going to take too much time to do the basics. Mm -hmm. So you do smaller committee to get the fast track of what you want, and then you get the contribution of the other to augment the content, and then you really move on. Otherwise, if we do all the committee 20 together, uh, in one year we'll still be talking. I think the idea here is how do you scale someone ask that question um, when you don't know anyone, whatever. It, there are just never surprised you. So there are tools that will help us come to cons uh, consensus and help us uh, sort of facilitate the conversation. We can take votes on that uh, online. So, yes. so then, you know, let's say someone is passionate, we create a document, here's what we think, et cetera, et cetera. We have some discussions. We have discussions on the board. We can take the online vote. Uh, I'm, and, and then again, there's a lot of ways of governance that people would like to talk about. Maybe we can go to some of these issues one day at a time where we say, well, Governance, let's talk about it and have a session on governance where we get all talk about yeah, exactly. it. And then eventually we'll get through a lot of these issues. But I think learning how do we scale, because committees don't scale, um, because it becomes very complex at some point, how do we leverage technologies to actually uh, reduce some of the, uh, right. to be able to do the uh, uh, scale? Are we on the conceptual phase or on the design phase, actually? I believe we're still on the conceptual phase. So we have to. Well, I think we have to do some coming together, right? Yeah. Because 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 we uh, sort of uh, network a lot here, uh, and and we get to know most of you. Uh, there are some new faces here, but we kind of know most of you here. Uh, but you probably don't know each other. So, so, yeah, okay. so we need to do something together. Did anybody do an introduction? Uh, no, no, because everybody arrives slowly, slowly, and some people like the questions, some people to other people. But, uh, yeah. But I, I think we should we should listen to Jamie uh, because mm -hmm. Jamie here is uh, coming to solve uh, another very important problem uh, that uh, these kind of systems uh, face. So so the idea here he just briefly presented the value accounting system, which is saying I have some assets, I can contribute with these assets to a project, and in exchange I get equity. Okay. But at the same time, what you're doing is that you're assuming some risk. Because equity, if that project doesn't go anywhere, then, then you just made a Oh, but if it goes with it. Sorry? You invest in something. So exactly. you don't so know what's going to exactly. be the so outcome. It is precisely an investment, right? Yes. So that's why I say that. Thank you for having all the Yes. Yes. But that's where But where Jamie comes into the picture, so, so this is a, this is, you can, you can look at it as, as a, also a, a network of shared resources or assets. And, and the way they're shared based on the biochemical system is against equity, so there is risk involved. Uh, 
so there's a need also for a value exchange system. Okay, so the value accounting system accounts for everybody's contributions, and there's equity in exchange, there's risk involved. The value exchange system is on this. Okay? So here's my thing, give me the other thing. And now uh, we're happy, I don't care what you do with the thing, I have my own thing, right? So the value exchange system is very reduces the risk. Okay. If there is no problem with the currency, uh, <laughs> if the currency doesn't get busted tomorrow, okay, there's no risk in that exchange. Okay. The moment you do the exchange, everybody's happy, right? So so there's <coughs> there's a need for value exchange on top of the value accounting system. For some of these professors, they might think I have a lab, I have uh, my lab is used only in 27 files or I have a very expensive microscope paying with tax paid hours. It's used 10% of the time. Um, you know what? I'm going to invest another 10% of its time against equity in some sensorical projects. So I'm taking a risk there. But the rest of it, I want to get something immediate in return. So basically, you need a currency. You need a currency here to alleviate some risk. Okay? If somebody wants to take lower risk but still share the equipment, well, they have a choice. I share it against equity, it's like investment, or I share it against something which is a currency that I can immediately turn around and buy something else. Okay? So I think there's a need in this system for a value exchange. So he's going he's to talk about the new alternative currency that has been working on. Do you want to find the PowerPoint for the next session? Uh, did you send me the email? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so while Jamie sets up, I'd like to invite anybody who needs office space or uh, they need to have meetings or something, you're free to use our space here. We have three conference rooms. This is the biggest one. We have about maybe five desks available in our office right now. So first come, first serve. So yeah, whenever you want to come, use our space. You're welcome to come. We're open. <laughs> Maybe we can yeah, just do a round of just names, because yeah. you're not get a chance of actually getting into details of what we do. We can talk to each other a little bit, but can we just do a quick round of names? Name it one sentence. Name it one sentence. Yeah, sure, I'm with Sotorica. Hopefully you got that message. Um, Fernando, you want to go? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, Fernando, I'm studying organizational identity and I'm studying this conversation and this project as a how different values come together and form a. His a new, PhD a new, is on Sensorica. Yeah. <laughs> a new sense of self and the creation of who we are as this project. My name is Jamie. I work with Justice Southern Montana Montreal as a volunteer. I work on the Structural Racism Committee and Resource Racism. Guy uh, um, computer uh, technology architect. So I uh, built solutions for whatever you want to do. Mathieu, <laughs> I'm um, a system administrator and interested in the story of that lab, and this sounds like a good opportunity. So I'm Ivan, I'm software developer. I'm here just to learn about the story. I'm Arthur. Uh, I just arrived in uh, Montreal, and uh, yeah, I'm interested in uh, Fab Labs as well and uh, digital fabrication, generally innovation. Uh, I'm Kevin. I normally, by day, I do my master's in biochemistry at McGill, and by night, I organize for Recobio, which is the biohacking space that started up recently, and we're getting going now and looking for spaces and projects and things like that. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm John. I'm the electrical engineer here at Sensorica, Type of Scientific. I make circuits. Hi, uh, my name is Ivan. Uh, I'm a member of Sensorica, uh, Type of Scientific, uh, responsible for biomedical applications. My expertise is uh, physiology and biomechanics. Hey, I'm Sebastian. I'm with uh, Cerdiner, with their drone uh, project. I'm uh, Benio, and you're a homer, uh, <laughs> multiplayer and a uh, maker. That's the third one. So, my name is Mark IV. Um, I work on a project called Tiki. Oh, um, yeah. It's a bit like uh, Wikipedia, um, same model where it's uh, an open source project with Trinity. 
Uh, but instead of building content or knowledge like Wikipedia, we build software. And basically, Tiki is the open source web application with the most built in features. So we're talking you know, hundreds of people that work for 10 years to do just about any feature that's uh, under the sun. And uh, now we're expanding, and that's what my interest here, into sort of going outside the software world and more into the physical world. Um, and that's what I want to learn about. My name is Sergio Benicchio. I uh, build drones. I'm a photographer and a videographer. And uh, one of my day job is marketing consultant and a branding consultant. Uh, and drone building just came naturally because I needed aerial footage. And I fell in love with the bikes. I'm Benoit Hassan. Thank you to the uh, uh, Green Wall, basically, on that project, and also with the regime of the Green Wall, uh, uh, which is you know, trying to make things for more uh, kind of a group of interest people in developing technology. So when I found uh, those people, I just sort of felt uh, just super happy, and I'm uh, very happy to be here with you. I uh, share with that great opportunity that we love together. I'm uh, the Genesis of Born Arnold. Uh, which is a, a foundation that promotes uh, innovations, new technology, and uh, collaboration between uh, people. So, uh, if you want to see a bit more information, you can also go on our web uh, site and our Facebook, uh, Facebook page. And that. We organize every two, every two weeks. Uh, the conference and it's a good place for people like you who uh, would like to uh, criticize your projects. So it's a, a window for people who would like to criticize uh, what they do and to have collaboration from people. It's time to plan to plug yourself. When is the next meeting and what's going to be the subject? Okay, the next meeting <laughs> the next, next, uh, next Friday the 17th. And the subject will be on, uh, on uh, uh, a reactor for metallic uh, reactors. So people with uh, knowledge in that uh, topic are welcome. Physical knowledge people. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the same uh, software developer, but it's my first time here. But I like the philosophy of open source. So. My name is Steve. Um, I've got a little bit of this from Sensor at the Meetup uh, website. And, um, I love the, the, the concept of being pretty. My background is an interior designer. I work at an architectural firm, uh, and then I like design uh, tabletop games, and I like to design in general. Hi, this is Victoria Light, and this is my husband, Mr. Lindenlight, who will introduce you. I'm Lai, I'm a founder of Vine. Uh, it's a crowdsourced connection engine. Uh, we're currently in development. Uh, Jamie Finger. Yeah. I'll be introducing myself from the trailer, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you want to take them in front? Yeah, sure. How about you? I'll start off. Same story again, take the same. I'm the cameraman. That's right. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for, thanks all for being here and uh, doing an NCD for giving me this uh, platform where we should explain what I'm doing. And I'll be explaining what it is and then I'll later talk about how it can really integrate with me. Um, a lot of the ideas came out of a very uh, brief meeting, but it's just this thing's been developing so much so quickly that uh, I think it's, uh, it's a really good fit. So uh, it's the Jack of All Trade Universe, uh, Joatu for short. Uh, and it's an online community marketplace as well as a community currency generator. So <laughs> Uh, fish and vision walkthrough, the integration, and then basic overview. Um, our mission is to build a platform for value exchange, so a way that people can exchange anything for anything. Um, not limited to barter, not limited to cash, not limited to services. 
spot on image now. Not limited to anything at all. It's up to the individuals within the exchange to make the exchange between them, find a fair exchange. And it's also to have a direct democracy currency generator. So um, to create currency that then serves for projects that benefit the community. Okay, you can go ahead. Our vision, you gotta pull it a little further. Right. Our vision is basically to build an economy that seeks to promote human welfare. Um, the economy as it stands now is not, uh, and it by any means for anything by itself. And I think if we can build a, uh, an economy that's based around collaboration and cooperation as compared to competition, we can wipe the floor. Uh, and I think that's where open source the world is. Uh, it's everything about, uh, I mean, this is everything about. Um, so what are we speaking about here? It's an online community marketplace. So think about all the things you know how to do. Think about all the skills that you have, all the skills that you'd like to learn, share, and prove. <coughs> how many of you are, are, are uh, uh, acquainted with the idea of alternative currencies? Okay, so that's your problem. Okay. Um, so just get an idea. Think about your, your personal skills, your personal capabilities, the things that you want to learn about more. Think about the things you know how to grow as far as plants, the things you know how to produce as far as the things that you, uh, you want to build or grow, create, generate. Uh, if you're an architect, you can make plans, what have you. So all the things that you know how to actually produce as far as products, and then all the products that you bought already that you have sitting in your home um, that no that you're not using right now. Um, so all of those things you could, that either you want to sell or trade or just rent or give away. Um, so tools, guitars, what have you. With this, we can create a decentralized tool library. So I'll talk about how that will work a little bit later. So that's going to be a basic profile. Everybody would need to fill out a good amount of information. I mean, it's up to them how involved they want to do with the project itself. But they fill out the information, the things that they can offer, the things that they want, um, and the things that they have that they want to rent it as well. And everybody would have a basic profile like that. You find there would be multiple communities throughout Montreal, throughout the world, ideally. And the first one is going to be uh, near Concordia in uh, early 2014. That's what we're waiting for. So the next few months, we'll hopefully have a functional, uh, functional beta version. Uh, and the first community will launch. What was that one? April-ish. Um, so the very first one will be over there. Maybe the second one would be at B. Uh, that would be a uh, yeah, let's say. And the, the idea is that we have 200 people per community. So we have 200 people that are willing to. Uh, at least 200. Yeah, at least 200 people. That's right. So 200 people that would be willing to call Concordia the center of their space. So whereas Kijiji, you go online and you see that it's someone on the other side of the city, you have to, and you just get distracted. This thing, this would be, you only see the, you'd see the people separated who are just near Concordia, or who are willing to travel to Concordia. So they don't have to meet at Concordia, but that's the base location. So the assumption is that you'll meet in a public place that's available to everybody, non-commercialized. Um, so it could be libraries, it could be parks, um, what have you, schools. And basically, basically the way that will function is you have your main community, and then you'll select the communities that are a little bit further away that you're still willing to travel to. And then you'll select, and you won't have to select the ones that you're not going to travel to. But you'll select your main community and the ones that are a little bit further away. So if you're if you're elderly, perhaps uh, you can't travel too far, you'll select only the main one. If you're always on a bike and you're willing to travel to the other side of the city, maybe you'll select a lot of them. Uh, but that's up to the individuals who are members of the site. <coughs> um, so basically, the way that that would function is uh, you're going to unload for a plumber. And so when I type in plumber, I'm going to get my personal community results, the ones that are very close to me within a 15, 20 minute walk. And then I'll get an extended results, which are all the ones that are within the extended community. So maybe uh, the ones in my community don't have as many good reviews. Maybe the ones further away have better reviews. I second guess myself. I want to make sure that I get the plumber with the best reviews. So I'm going to go beyond my own community and, and see uh, and try and get to sure that they come and help you. Uh, feel free to stop me if you have questions. Uh, 
this is this is just an overview at this point, though, so it might be easier if you understand the basics first. Um, so between me and another person, me and Shirley, um, it's up to us to determine the price. It's up, it's up to us to determine uh, the the costing of uh, of the service, uh, when, where, and so on. It's, it's really like that. Um, and we can mix and match currency. So it's not going to be necessarily where I'm going to say I'm going to pay you fifty dollars, and maybe I'll say I'll pay you thirty dollars, and I'm really good at cutting hair, so I'll offer you a haircut and I'll bake you some dandruff. It's really it's you can choose the currencies that you want to receive. So if you have on your profile that you really love cookies, <laughs> then the person will be more inclined to make you an offer that has cookies. The mix and match of currencies. There's a new one as well, which is the Jotu Universe. And so the Jotu Universe creates the Jotu Unit um, as a community currency generator. And it's a money that's only created by the community itself. So if it's only created by the community, then it only makes sense that it's something that benefits the community. Otherwise, they wouldn't create it. If I want like your, if I want you to bake me some banana bread, I'm not going to ask the community to get you to bake me some banana bread. I'm just going to ask you directly. But if I want banana bread to distribute to the homeless, then maybe that's a that's something that would benefit the community. Maybe the community would see value in that. So that's something that I could ask the community at large. Um, so things like public classes, uh, how-to guides. Uh, uh, if a if a school, if a bunch of students decided to start including class notes and uh, to create like a giant uh, a giant directory of all the class notes of Concordia. Available to everybody, part of the Commons, um, whether they're part of the site or not. So a wiki of all the class notes of Concordia, that could be something that they could be paid in this unit for, if the community believes it has value. If they don't believe it has value, it won't happen. So the Jotu unit are created to fund the projects that benefit the community. So for example, um, okay, so the, the unit itself is generated like this. Um, there's a zero percent interest rate, so you're gonna have your units in your in your account. Uh, it's inflationary as compared to deflationary. So it's up to the community to manage their own rate of inflation. If they want to produce an unlimited supply of currency uh, because they're producing things of value for the community, so be it. If they want to limit it and be more selective as to the things that they allow to be created, so be it. Each community dictates how their community functions in the creation of their own currency. Can you put this in context here? Just a little bit? In context of V, right? Maybe we just make a pause. So, for example, I want uh, I want to use the microscope of someone at the uh, the university. Okay, it's not a community issue. It's between me and him. So then the exchange we may exchange some 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 currency dollars, bitcoins, so, some jotus that I have in my pocket. <coughs> These jotus that I have in my pocket, who created them? Well, the community created them. When? Well, there was an event at one point. I decided to offer a free course on 3D printing okay, uh, to everybody in V. And I invited everybody, so one evening I spent my time to give this free course to everybody. And that, now the community decides that this is valid for the entire community because I raised everybody's knowledge about 3D printing. And they say the community decides to create five Jotus because I'm offering value to the community. This is how these five Jotus were created, because I'm giving value to them. Now I have five Jotus in my pocket. And now they become currency. I can buy anything I want in the community. Okay, so when I go to use the microscope of that guy, I can use these five Jotus, or I can use dollars or anything else. Okay, but I, the transaction can go through the system. You see what I'm saying? Because the system now records the transaction and knows that I use the microscope of that guy. It can go into the value account system if you want or not. Or whatever. And this is not a speculative system in one regard. It's not because it's inflationary. It's just a, I'm sorry, it's inflationary. Was that a good question? Yeah, that was great. That was great. Yeah. How do you decentralize against wording? I'm sorry? How do you decentralize wording? Well, if the currency is losing value because it's constantly being created, people are not going to have, like, right. then holding on to the money is not going to slow anyone else down from creating money. That's the problem with wording. So if they want to hoard it, by all means. If someone's able to hoard Jotu, that's because they've done so much for the community that they're like a pillar. But they just want to be someone who creates value all the time. So be it. So what I see here is the Bitcoins. It's, it's an example that I hate. It's a deep I have to talk. 
<laughs> the value of that thing is like $1,000 today. I don't, no, I don't play that game. I, I say it's, we are, I try to avoid exchanging to go and sharing. And I'm not idealistic. I just realized that the system in which we live is unrealistic. Uh, and this is, is in Utopia. It's going nowhere since 7,000 years. Um, so maybe I am uh, quite a bit uh, emotive on that. But the thing is, uh, <laughs> the, thing is uh, um, the notion of sharing, I'm fine with it. The notion of creating value that can be speculated or value the value. And, so the fact that it's varied and value, it's mean it's speculated. And I'm not, absolutely not comfortable with that aberration of the actual system. It's the same thing as the trade center. <coughs> that word must stop one day. I, or I dream about the day we can stop to exchange shares. Uh, it's just uh, it's the abomination of our system creating uh, people who have money, more rich than people who have talents. And I'm, 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 I'm fed up. So I just want to make sure that we're not going to create another monster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid about it a little bit. But it's no, a great thing. Yeah, like it. Yeah. Yeah. it is a value exchange system. It's yeah. not a value sharing system. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. I understand your, your reservations. I don't completely understand. It's not something that hasn't been brought up before. Uh, Joe2 is designed as a transitional system. Yeah. It applies to the current market, and it can apply to the future market. But my problem, my problem is uh, the reason that I'm not creating it that each value is exactly the same, something like that, uh, is because there already are systems like that. Mm -hmm. There's that called the uh, where an hour of time is worth an hour of time. And I think idealistically that's beautiful, but I think to force people to say an hour of my time is worth an hour of your time is, isn't fair. Um, and it isn't fair in today's world because they'll just leave the system. Anyone who doesn't agree won't be part of that system. This system allows everyone who wants to sell one unit for one unit to do so. But it also allows someone who wants to try and sell it for 10 to sell it for 10. So it's not it's not limited in the same regard. It's, a, it's more of a free market. Um, you have to understand the battery. Yeah, sure. On the simulation that might bring to the Sure. It, it gives the people the opportunity. This is not an economic system that is forced upon the people like we're currently seeing. And this is not an idealistic system that only applies to like hippies and Communists. No, no, no. I know they didn't mean the communists. Just saying. No, no, no. But I mean it for everybody. That's the point. Now we are different. You look like a baby. Thank you. That's my point. I didn't want to put on a shirt. I'm not going to put on a tie. I don't want to give you any illusions as to who I am. I don't want you to think any, like, I want you to realize that I'm, I am who I am, and I'm going to create my system, whether you guys use it or not, because there are people that want to use it. And I think it would be a good fit for this, for this environment. Um, so yeah, that's the, that, those are just some, some traits of the system itself. It's not the be-all, end-all, but it's the idea that we can, it can be a transitional system for the people that are already using Kijiji, already using Craigslist, uh, to make their exchanges. And can like incentivize them to be like, oh, maybe I'll accept Joe too because that guy created a community garden and he he needs my help right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna extend myself. And it's someone that literally lives in your neighborhood that you're gonna be helping out. So you get to know your neighbors better and you feel better about the people you're exchanging with. It builds community for numerous numerous reasons. Yes. So I see that there's the value of the currency, but is it is there also something like the value? Cultural or reputation system that some of the creative world value people know. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. There's a, there's going to be references. So when someone offers a course, uh, we're we're hoping that someone will go and go onto their profile and leave a reference to say that this course was very valuable or this course didn't bring me anything at all. He shouldn't be teaching anymore. I think for, for some people, it'll actually be more value to to just have the network. You know, like now I'm looking for a plumber, but you know where do you go? Like you look. Know, it's hard, it's hard, but if you know that through this system, somebody already used them and they were happy, well, that just solves your problem. It's much more important than the price 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it replaces Yelp in that regard, too. Yeah, it's a it's a mer meritocratic practice. So based on, on merit. Um, so for these reasons, yeah, I, I think that uh, you know, let's move on to the next one. But uh, it'll it'll help people if you know that you're not when you have units and you're gonna you're not spending your hard earned dollars, you know, you have this idea uh, that we have to hold on to our money and don't give it away. But in this system, every time that you give someone else uh, a Joe 2 unit, you're helping them, uh, you're giving them a job, one, and you're giving them an opportunity to get what they need. So I'm trying to change the mentality on spending money in a system. So that's, that's kind of uh, another aspect of this. So the way that it'll work is, uh, is as follows. I'm a photographer, among other things. So I would organize an outdoor photography class. And so basically, I'm going to have to fill out this form that explains who, what, where, why, when. Uh, explain the value that exists in my photography class, why I believe photography is a valuable skill that people should have, and so on and so forth. And it's going to automatically email everybody who lives in my community that I select. So anyone who lives within a few, a few kilometers of me. Or maybe I've already given it to that community, and I decide the other side of Montreal should benefit now. So I can offer it in another community that hasn't had it yet. So then they'll receive an email, a um, basic notification, that says, uh, I'm offering this photo class. How much value do you think it brings to society? So they think about the other values that, have, that they've paid in the past. They think about how much Joju is worth approximately. They see a listing of all the other of all the other transactions, they have a sense, okay, well, I think it's worth seven. And then everybody does that, everyone in the community, everyone will say what they think it's worth, five, three, ten, what have you. And we're going to do an average of the median. So if there's 100 votes, we're going to use the middlemost vote. So we're going to take votes number 45 to 54, let's say, and we'll just uh, add them all together and then divide by 10 to get uh, a mix between the average and the median. So whatever that number becomes, in this instance, it would be 5 plus 5 divided by 2. Uh, those are the amount of units that are created. So the voting process doesn't cost anyone anything. It's just an opinion. But, but you have to have some sort of a value, because maybe I think it's worth a thousand, and he thinks it's worth five, because he thinks that, uh, you know, he's exchanged something recently for, I don't know, a thousand, and to him, that thing was not that valuable. So a thousand is not that much to him. Yeah, but to a margin right. in the statistics, <laughs> because they so take the median. Or uh, the statistics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can always take both. So it can't can just one person just like say vote for Shirley on the Google. Yeah, we ignore their vote, remember? So we only take votes number, we put high, lowest to highest, we only use the 10% in the middle. So all the other ones are just outliers pulling up or pulling it down a little bit but they're not going to be included in the final analysis. So if you wanted to, to mess with the system, you would need to get a large percentage of your community to be corrupt. Yeah, absolutely. I'm interested in uh, people studying economics, uh, statistics, so that we can, stick, we can put metrics into the system right away, so that we can study a newfound economic system like right from the get So we know exactly where the metrics go. So. Any of your you know, uh, people who are interested in that kind of thing? Um, yes, yeah, everyone on the other side. Yes. You said that you, you can go and make your class in another community. What happens if the currency system is completely different in that community? Then the value of your course is going to be completely diff different from one community to another. Sure. So there's different ways that we can, we can correct that issue. Uh, one of them is, is limiting the amount, uh, the, the multiplier. So let's say, uh, let's say the basis is the amount of hours. Just, everyone has to put the amount of hours that they're going to put in, their contribution, and then there's a multiplier. The multiplier can, can max it out at 10. So if we're always averaging it out, maybe it'll be worth 50 units here and like 70 in the other one. So it's really going to, it's always going to pull more towards the middle. So everything is going to be closely related. Um, it could get skewed over time. We could function in ways where there's, uh, where we have a, um, um, an exchange rate, so this community has this value, and and in that in that other community, because they created so many more units, we have an exchange rate. But it gets more complicated. There's there's ways to correct it, um, but it's kind of similar to in Montreal. That's not likely to happen. 
maybe if you're going to do it in Montreal and then there's another community on the other side of the world, it's the equivalent of being, uh, being an, an average person in Montreal and being a king in India. It's the same thing, but if we're multiplying by 10, we're limiting it to a significant amount, so we're skewing it more towards an average uh, equal, uh, equal of it. Like in the part in, in, in oh, sorry. I was just going to ask, then, how many um, voting processes is a community member, in average, expected to participate per day? Yeah, what is the low? Uh, yeah. um, I can't know that yet. We're not, we're not in that uh, route there yet. Over time, it will decrease, because what will happen, uh, as we get more and more people per community, we'll need less people to, to actively vote to maintain a functional system. And so people will be able to, over time, select the interests that they have. So if you don't have any interest in any music ones, well, you just make sure that no, nothing to do with music ever shows up in your feed. And if you have nothing, you don't want to know about education, nothing about education either. Whatever you want. As long as no, like, if you want to avoid the question entirely, I can't stop you. So I'm just gonna, we're not going to count you as someone who's interested in doing that. It's up to the individual to decide how motivated they want to be within the system itself. If you want to contribute to how the currency is created, by all means. So it's a lazy democracy, basically. Mm -hmm. It's a lazy democracy. Yeah. If you want to participate, you don't want Yeah. And as long as you have a facial vote, votes, right? Yeah. You just have numbers. Exactly, right? exactly. There's a minimum percentage, uh, not percentage, but there's a minimum number of votes that would be required for something to pass. Mm -hmm. And then a percentage of that would need to say yes. So let's say you're offering um, like a, a class for, um, for guns. You're offering a class for guns, something controversial. And you can't make, you can't, less than 20% think that what you're offering has value. So maybe that wouldn't pass. Maybe 20% of the people who vote have to say yes for it to pass. These are possibilities. Is, is that on that side, you select you to do what kind of information you can use? I mean, if I'm not interested in music, that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, and I don't, not just, I would never be able to receive any kind of offer related to music or something like that. Right. Or, that's not going to be there immediately, okay. but over time that's the idea. That you'll select the things that you're interested in, and then you can uh, then you can avoid the ones that you're not interested in. Longer term, longer term, what we want to do is uh, integrate uh, liquid democracy. Um, so direct democracy is where everyone has one vote. Liquid democracy is a form where you can uh, hashtag all the different categories for the vote. So education, medicine, um, agriculture, and then if I don't know a lot about education, well, I can, I can give that vote to my professor. And if I don't know a lot about agriculture, I can give that vote to my botanist. So it's, I can decide where my vote goes, and I can also make it anonymous so they don't know that they're my elected official. So I have a referendum by question. Sure. The sociocracy? I'm sorry? The sociocracy? Uh, I've heard of this term as a technocracy, but I'm sure that's specifically not meant that we're going to share you that information. I'm sure. What if, I think it's quite similar. What if uh, people with uh, similar skills uh, come together and uh, make an agreement not to uh, lower the price uh, to below, price, below a certain level? So you have guilds, right? Yes. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you have professional, uh, professional communities. I, I, expect, I expect exactly that to happen, but I expect there, therefore, to be uh, more competition that will come from other communities that will say, oh, those guys are offering their price way too high. I have an opportunity to undercut that market. And so it's going to function like a normal market where if the price is, is held too high, there's going to be new competition that comes in. I can't stop. I mean, we have, we have all of our keys in our current system. It's just not to be that big. <laughs> How does that compete with the, with the traditional market? Suppose you want a plumber. And it's too expensive through the community voting process, so I'll just go to the just pay in dollars cash to the to the guy, you know. Sure. Uh, yes, very possible. I mean, if his if his price in Joe two is too high and his price in dollars is lower, I mean, pay him price in dollars, and then he'll maybe he'll equilibrate his price, or maybe he'll keep it as it is, or maybe someone else will come and provide the proper competition. There's also ways that uh, let's say there's things that the community believes that everybody should have. Let's say dental care, for example. Maybe maybe the community believes that dental care is too expensive and that it should be more accessible. So what if what if the community decides for as a community offer to create a um, um, a subsidy? So anytime and so if the dentist price is normally ten, everyone agrees that it should be eight. Eight's a fair price. Ten's too much. 
So now every time someone goes to the dentist, the person pays eight, and the community generates two units to go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. So the price stays the same, but the, the person is, is able to now afford to go to the dentist. Um, that's about a really good question here. What's about the tax? Uh, <laughs> each time you have a transaction, legally, uh, the tax will be paid. That's right. So uh, it is the substantial standard. How is it working? So, so here's the situation in regards to tax. I recommend that nobody put their real name uh, in the system itself. So keep your own anonymity if you choose to, um, I mean, as you wish. You can put your real name if you want. You don't have to. Uh, there's not going to be a typical profile. You're not going to have a picture. You're not going to have a name. I think uh, I want to avoid ageism. I want to avoid sexism. I want it based on the references, not based on what you look like or who you are. It can just be natural person agreements. Like an agreement amongst natural yeah. persons, not your, your legal entity of you, but the natural person, which is outside of our economic yeah. system. I don't think you're written in small letters. But, but obviously, in V, you can't can, can, yeah. can have that solution. So, so you're supposed to be taxed on every exchange. You're supposed to determine the market value outside of the system, and then and then for donation. Okay, so it's a it's a donation. Okay. But tell you, legally you should be paying taxes on all these transactions. Same thing in Kijiji, though. Every time you sell something on Kijiji, you should technically be paying taxes on that. Technically speaking, it's truly you can have uh, it. If you don't compare the value to the real currency, then it's not taxable. So Canadian dollars is not taxable. So Canadian Taiwan is not taxable because it's not compared to the. It's not generated respectively to the US Canadian dollar. It is generated based on how much value you create. It's the same reason aeroplane miles are not yes. So as long as you don't compare it to Canadian dollars, you would be fine. So as long as you don't have an exchange rate, yes. it's same dollars. Yes. But you can have black markets, right? Sorry? You can have black markets. Yeah. That's different. But I'm just saying, like, uh, should be good. Okay. Uh, interesting. Uh, any other questions for you? Okay, well, I mean, I'm basically done the, the overview. It's, uh, so those five units would be generated, right? So everyone agreed upon the the price everyone gave their input and that was the that was the amount that came out to, to be the most agreed upon number. And so that's what's created. So now I get five units for teaching a class that would be generated by the system itself. And everybody who decides to come to my class gets to come for free. So it's a system that we can have free education, free food if I'm going to go plant a garden and let it be accessible. Um, and then the only way that I mean for it to be sustainable, I need people to accept my Joe two units. If they don't accept it, then it's not. Then I'm not going to keep offering classes. I'm not going to keep planning gardens. So it's really, it's kind of, it's a little. I, I like to, to say it's like a pyramid scheme, uh, but with one level. So it's the same. It's everybody. The same people who are benefiting are the same people who are are paying into it. So so now with all these votes, of so the creation of the units, how do you do this? You did say you you want an inflationary system. Uh, for the reasons you explained, how do you control or do you want to control the amount of inflation in the system? So that's another thing that we have to play with. We have to really put it into the system itself and let let the the, the, the people figure out what's working and what's not. Uh, I'm I'm making a, I mean I'm making so many assumptions with this creation. There's just one thing is that the people that are voting create the inflation. Yep. Not necessarily the people that are affected. And when you create sure. currency by a small number of people that decide to create currency, it devalues proportionally. Well, if you have legal yeah. democracy, it's basically a direct democracy. It's a mix of direct democracy and representative democracy. So everybody could be involved in the decision. Yeah, but the people that are more involved, that are, are voting more often. Yeah. Oh, yes. But creating, it's not the cast. Yeah. They're, they're, creating, they're, they're basically um, sharing their values. System mm -hmm. and compared to the people that are silent, yeah. well, their value, their, their currency is just devalued, 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 yes. proportionally. Mm -hmm. So it could be that they're because they're fine with whatever the people decided, but that's why I think they're having a at least measuring what inflation is so that people can. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I also believe uh, that as the system grows, it's kind of something that will build off of itself. And as more people enter the system, 
uh, the money will be, or the units will be spread out more and more. So it'll take a very long time for inflation to hit it hard because the money will be, or the units will be spread out so uh, so vastly throughout the community that for anyone to accumulate enough that they decide that they have to forcibly raise their prices to stave off, or because you know it's it's inflation is a is a human concept. It's not something that that is forcibly. So if the community decides that we're not going to raise prices, that we're just going to let people keep the amount of units that they have, and that we're just going to continue dealing like this, they can't. Uh, it was uh, the Rio. Uh, the Rio, there were two, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Rio. There were two Rios. One of them, uh, the, there was inflation, inflation, inflation. And they created a second one where there wasn't inflation. And then all of a sudden, they just switched over to this new one. And all of a sudden, there just wasn't inflation anymore for no particular reason. The reason there's inflation is because one person says that, I'm sorry? There's confidence. It's exactly that. There's confidence in the system. They ran parallel currencies, and one, they had inflation issues over and over and over that cycle. So they kept one currency in place that went up and down, and they kept they had another currency that was stable. And they always measured the fluctuating currency against a stable currency. But didn't they pay the stable currency to the U.S. dollar? Like they did have a, they the did matching, have, yeah, yeah, they did have a matching outside source. That was the mm -hmm. point of creating the second currency. Right. But the, 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 the trick of what they did was to create uh, confidence in in one the currency. The confidence was also that stable. Uh, yeah. This is a oh, fair yeah. I don't. I don't. I actually. I don't know about the That's <laughs> fine. You talking about before the rail? How they created yeah, the yeah, yeah. How they created the how they stabilized the currency is that they paid the second currency to the U.S. dollar, but they mm -hmm. allowed people to trade in both for a period of a year and a half. They were paid in one, and then and then you have the other one, and then source transition pricing and these things. Yeah. But it, it did go with a, a reference to the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's too complex for my small brain. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, uh, no, that's fine. I, I didn't know that. That's, that's good to know. I'll have to do more research into it. Um, regardless, it, 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 inflation is tied to confidence. And so if you have a, a confidence in the system itself, and you're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to charge my neighbor twice the amount that I charged him yesterday, then it could function. It needs the confidence of the people to function in itself. So it needs the confidence of the people to continue so that they're not going to start upping their prices to a point where it goes into so what happens is that often in alternative currencies and community currencies, what happens is people are going to really use the system for stuff that's not very expensive for them. So it's like stuff they were going to sell anyway, and they were, they were not necessarily going to get a lot of money for it. So it's like, oh yeah, it's, and or, or if they're selling uh, their services, so it's just their time for stuff that they like doing anyway. It's not necessarily some, they're not necessarily selling something that they have to pay themselves in another currency. Mm -hmm. So so then it's a bit more like, oh, well, I'll give it a shot. And if it works, it's cool. And if it doesn't work, it's not the end of the program. Mm -hmm. so. Sure. Which is good. Okay. In the context of software, we, I kind of look at it as uh, favors, right? Um, you just say, hey, I need something for you, you need something for me, you can keep track, and then email it out. Uh, and then other thing that I kind of see very useful for is social goods, what Jamie was bringing out that point, to say, well, we want to do something good for the community that's outside, this is how we create the currency. Let's do something for the neighborhood, let's do something, etc. We create the currency, uh, and then, you know, we'll sort of work it out. Over time, um, we will provide certain services. Um, that's kind of how I look at it and how I interpret it. In this. Um, another thing is with respect to some people hoarding inflation and whatever. Remember, it's currency that's separated by the community, whatever their values are. If there's enough diversity, there's enough causes, and a lot of that will kind of even out. Say, well, hey, you'd be having a lot of home work for homeless people for a while. Well, someone would say, I want to sort of do something with homeless people. Uh, I don't necessarily see that as sort of, I kind of look at it as this. This currency being very relevant for the ecosystem that we're in, not necessarily very complex world problems. Uh, so that's my opinion. It's a complementary currency, right? Sorry? It's a complementary. It's currency. a complementary currency just so that it can be reasonably. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's another thing. It, it's very important that it's understood that one, it's a transitional system, and two, it's a complementary currency. Yeah. I'm not trying to replace the US dollar here. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Think big. <laughs> Think big. <laughs> <laughs> so here's how it works. How I see it uh, functioning with the um, so we can create an open innovation bounty system. So let's say uh, that some, there's a challenge that's being proposed, um, and we'll create a, a they decide to exchange open create open source free model system to a green wall system. Um, so there's a proposition B wants to see uh, more green walls so that they don't have to pay for a cafeteria or whatever, or they want to lower their costing. And they want to just be able to take things off the wall and keep them when they need them. Um, so it's up to the, the members themselves to vote up the idea. So there's going to be a listing of all the things that people are proposing. And then if someone see, if this idea gets high enough on the chain, it'll be said to be worth a, a high enough value. And someone who has the capabilities to build it will say, oh, Joe 2, it's going to pay me enough in Joe 2 to warrant its value creation. So I'm going to take it on and I'm going to make a proposition that I'm going to build this and this is what I need. And this is how they create it. And so uh, if the users said, already said that they wanted it and they believe that this person has the qualifications to actually complete it, they'll say, this person can build it. We, we instill confidence in, uh, in him or her. And, and we'll generate the currency to fund this, this project within this building, uh, if that's something that the community believes is worthwhile. So there's also the idea of uh, Joe 2 supported promotion. So things that generally support, support the community, the, uh, the, the 3D printing class. Uh, if you're looking for, uh, if you have, uh, if you need something specific within your, uh, you're missing out uh, marketing, so you can ask for marketing services. If your open source idea is something that's going to be beneficial to society, um, and then for community-focused organizations. So let's say uh, the SADEC uh, didn't get as many as much grant money as they hoped, and they're going to need to cut one of their employees. So maybe they can get a volunteer position in Joe 2 to come on board to help with a few hours a week. Or maybe, and this is like super generous idea, but uh, maybe some of the other members will take a slight salary cut and will take a supplement in Joe 2 so that they can keep the extra person on staff. Uh, just different ways that it can balance so that people can, uh, so you can get more people working for community organizations. Um, and then uh, what uh, Tiberius was talking about before, so if you're working on an open source project, uh, you can always you can always take project equity. You log your hours in, your, in the value of payment system in Sorka. Uh, or maybe if you're working on a project that the community believes has value, you can say, I'm going to do this many hours, and I'm going to do this for this project. This, uh, this project is beneficial to the community for these many reasons. So I think I should get Joe 2 units for it. And if the community agrees, then you can get Joe 2 units. Or maybe you can say, I'd like to do a portion of each and uh, request it as a community offer. Um, or maybe maybe even B could, as a, as a conglomerate, can get a portion of Joe 2 generated for it to designate within itself. Uh, if the community believes that B can operate with, like, internal, uh, but outside of the Joe 2 system. So Joe 2 creates 100 units for B to distribute among its B members. <coughs> so these are all different possibilities. Um, yeah, yeah, sometimes it happens in community spaces. I went to a lot. So I was in California two weeks ago, and I went to a lot of community spaces, hacker spaces. And it happens quite often that some people get stuck with doing a lot more work and cleaning, make big hands, etc., etc. Something like having, let's say, I did something in community. I maintained the space and cleaned the room, etc. I can get certain jobs which I can use to pay for other things. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> and then judging it as a project generation currency. So this, this fits in perfectly with the entrepreneurship. So, um, so yeah, that's what I was saying before. So we uh, or some smaller project proposes that we're building or Jotu itself. We're building Jotu. Do you think it has value? Can we get Jotu units that then we will spend to fund marketing to pay, to, to pay for promotion? to pay for uh, HR, whatever it is that we need. If the community believes it, uh, believes in the project that's being built, well, Joe 2 can generate to support said project. Or if you need to use a laboratory. Um, so maybe we can create a, a hub of laboratories that 
if someone meets a certain level of qualification, a certain level of reputation, so they know how to use a CNC machine, um, then they can use that laboratory, and every time they do it, they log it, and a certain amount of Joe 2 can be a lot of heat generated to that laboratory, or equity, like a mix of both or one or the other. Uh, we can do a decentralized tool library as well, uh, where you have everybody, uh, you, you create a listing of all the tools that you believe are necessary in this community, and then the individuals within the community would say, I have that tool, I have that tool, I have that tool. And then you figure out a payment system that maybe every time, uh, maybe they get like a, a joke to a month or something like that just for having their tool as accessible and anyone can borrow it at any time. Or they get paid for the amount of time it's borrowed. So it wouldn't necessarily cost the individual to borrow that tool, but it would certainly be funded by the community itself. But that's up to the community to decide if they want that. One of the things also is also, um, Let's say if you want to invest like, in financial capital to buy an equipment, but it costs hundred thousand dollars. We, we generate a certain amount of doses for it, and we give it to a funder or crowdfunding people or private capital, and they, they we owe them favors over time. Right? Right? So they can say over time, hey, we need to engineer facility here. We need to use a tool. We need to use this. From time to time, they might come and say, here's a joke two or two or five or ten. And we will do this particular thing. So that becomes a way for us to be able to interact with not just within ourselves, but outside with also becomes part of the interface to be able to but this is how people without have any money exchange uh, in, in that uh, in the process. This is how people crowdfunded uh, some restaurants. Uh, they just issued uh, some some uh, free meals. Free meals tickets. So Found my restaurant in the community. The community supported that the, the building of that restaurant, and then just distributed free meals. They're not going to come all in one day, right? They're going to come, you know. Uh -huh. huh? It's California. I'm sure they did. Oh, yeah. Chicago. And there's a cafe uh, in Brazil that does that. This this is the mode of expansion. This is called uh, what's the cafe called? Oh, yeah. There's an organization that does exactly yeah. that. That helps oh, like yeah. a, a startup well, issue yeah. these credits. In advance, so that if they find exactly you want you want a bakery in there, well, if 100 people are willing to spend 100 dollars at that bakery to get it started. Now you have 110 dollars worth of gift certificate to spend. That's a group point that started. Group point? Yeah, that's how they got started. They were screwed and they got coupons from downstairs to resell, and that's what started everything. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. In and they get more, more they get more for, for, for the market because uh, you give the guy a coupon which is worth market price twenty dollars, but you give him a spaghetti which which your cost is basically ten dollars, right? You see what I'm saying? So everybody's a winner here, you know? Uh, what we do, let's say, even at the very beginning, if you're doing uh, you need money to get this story started, that's another way to provide it. You go to the community, like, hey, we have we are talented people, we have all the skill sets, etc. We will owe you favors for a while. So every month ago, they will say, hey, I need the course of this, or I need to get this repaired now. My car is broken. So they can kind of catch the favor over time, and every once in a while, we beat them. Yeah, I, I think that there's enough interesting stuff going on in this room, and be a few more practice to add on that you know, if actions properly and send it to the internet, no fun. Yeah. You know, but you have to get on. Get on a message and then find what that, that commonality is between groups. You gotta bind us together. To express that. This is good. Bind us together. <laughs> yes. Is that any skills? No, that's a startup. Bind is Yeah, I'm almost done. Um, so Joe Two can be the open source community funder. Generate credit with no debt for open source projects to be more readily in the free market. Um, if we have a way to raise capital without needing banks to do so, without needing external funders, with only needing an internet connection and a community that wants to support us, all the quicker you can do it overnight. Um, and I see, I see huge opportunities everywhere from this. Um, so, an overview if things go right, this is what should be happening in 2014. We want to help underemployed and unemployed people um, become part-time freelancers. We want to give more opportunities to individuals with time to spend it wisely. Um, you'll feel more secure in your community because you'll know your community. You'll pass by people you know all the time. 
and you'll feel that people will be able to discover their usefulness, discover their purpose, and and experiment in different skills. They'll be able to go take a class that they would have never thought to pay for. But now it's a free class. Um, so they have no idea that they, they have no they have interest in applying this. Now they have an opportunity. Uh, you also get a hyper local comprehensive listing of everything that exists, all the services and skills and products that are all within a 15, 20 minute walk of you and beyond that if the people want to do it. Uh, free education with paid teachers, uh, skill acquisition, diversification, and one of the most important things to me is paid guerrilla gardening. Uh, from public food throughout the city. I want to see, um, I want to see Jam effectively and other groups that are doing similar things, uh, just taking public space and turning them into community gardens and like a, a decentralized like, Montreal-wide garden. Uh, and if we could just fund it through Jotu, incentivizing volunteerism, then uh, then I think we can have it done in no time. And then basically, uh, I mean, the idea for class notes was something that was brought to me. That wasn't an idea I had myself. So I can only imagine the decentralized tool library was another one. So I can only imagine how many uh, community-centric, like, creative ideas exist that I or no one in this room has even thought of yet. That they'll be able to say, "Hey, what if I offer this to Joe too?" They'll catch on. They'll catch on somewhere. They'll be tried somewhere. Some will work. Some will fail. But the amount of opportunities is enormous. It's not about to big Kickstarter doesn't actually allow for equity. Um, so you can't invest, you can only compete. But this way you can actually do an investment and say, hey, you get a bunch of doses. And you can catch it whenever you want. So let's say they gave us a whole lot of money uh, through crowdfunding. And you can say, here's a lot of jokes we give you. You get the play started, and over time they can catch it in very Spend it really fast. They can, well, it's hopefully, it's like, yeah, well, it's, hopefully they won't spend it. Yeah. But, so we can yeah. but but it only be in place based on how much we save yeah. on the piece. So if you want to tell them, hey, for the first two months, we wouldn't produce anything. So you get a chance to get your money for it. You can play around with that kind of stuff. No, I was just wondering if there isn't the risk of making things more uh, instrumental than they already are. For example, I want to give bread to the poor. I want something in return for the community. I want to give my old printer to the school. I want something back. I want to lend you my printer for 15 minutes. I want something back. Things that usually you would not necessarily want something in return, but the system is in somehow is to incentivizing people to get something in return for everything they do that benefit the community. I don't know what you think of it. Yeah, I mean, we, it definitely uh, poses a danger. Um, there's not. Uh, I think there are, those people will still do what they're already doing. But this will get more people who aren't already doing too much to jump into it. Uh, I think the, the pros outweigh the cons in, the, in that. Um, and I mean, like the small things, like I'm going to donate a printer to the school. I really hope nobody offers that as a Joe to community offer because it's like so insignificant. You can still donate whatever you want, whatever you want, regardless of whether this exists or money exists. I can sell my printer right now. I'm going to get a lot for it because we need an old printer. So I'll just donate it. Why would I try to even go through this system if I want to donate something, right? So in the end, if you want to donate something, you'll donate it. You'll give it to me. If you want to help out at the soup kitchen, you'll do it. Yeah, but it's like, like I'll yeah. wait five minutes to let the community decide. Oh, I'm going to donate this. Let's see what the community says. I think, oh, okay. Yeah, you're doing it for yourself. So, I don't think this would pose a the people wanting to donate stuff. Maybe, in some measure, yes. But what are the advantages that the system brings and outweigh So I think it's a balance. Yeah, no, it'll happen. It'll definitely happen. This is not a system that you want to implement within your household. For the family. I'm so serious. I'm so serious. It's so important that like people don't think, oh, we can like change, make everything have a value. Because mm -hmm. that's like that's a complete, yeah. complete danger. Then we, we move from yeah, being, yeah, like having a gift society in our own homes to having a yeah. commercialized uh, society. <laughs> <laughs> So it's really like beyond that. It's really to try and get people. I mean, 
So over time, as we create more and more things with community offers, you need the Joe 2 units less and less because you're getting food supply, you're getting education supply, you're getting your healthcare supply, you're getting lower costs of dental and all these things. So we're, it's, it's helping us transition more and more towards a gift economy. Uh, what happens when people are getting paid units that have no value anymore? I don't even know what happens at that, at that point. That's something definitely we're thinking about. But we're so far from yes, having sir, okay. we get it, huh? I think we have to induce that that yeah. how we mm. our donation somewhere. And in the time, more and more people are going to realize that energy is in abundance, as a dry as a water is in abundance. Mm. Uh, and we don't need to extract the problem and get out of that. Uh, then we can, <laughs> then we can, uh, because the most, the value of the thing is mainly based on the energy cost. And the day the energy cost dropped, and the day, the day we can produce our vegetable for about three, and the day we can transport for about three, all this thing can happen. Because the, the value of the thing is that the only real value is that the effort we put in, the added value we put in the transformation that we put when we put our talents there. That's the real value. The rest is just situation. So things are going to change in the mind. We have to induce that. Mm. And I'm going to read to this country about the way. Yeah, I have many ideas in that way. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I want to be quick for this presentation. I Or does it? So uh, how does that work? Yeah, there's uh, there's different ways that Joe2 can make money. Um, if it's advertising, uh, frankly, I want to allow the community to decide who it will allow that to advertise. So um, there's different ways that it, that it can be done. Uh, a benefit for a, for an advertiser for a local uh, store would be that they have a very small area that they can advertise to uh, that lives very close to them. So if you're a local coffee shop. And you have a community that lives five minutes away from you, well, that's pretty beneficial to you as compared to just trying to advertise to everybody everywhere. Um, so, what I want community uh, small local businesses to do is offer services or products in exchange for advertising. So, maybe they'll pay a nominal fee of uh, $50 or something, but they'll also give 50 free copies. And the community will decide the value of those copies in Jotu. And that, and that local business will now have a certain amount of Jotu having paid money, and will have to give coffee for free to the Jotu users. So if, you're, if you live within that community, uh, you have the opportunity to go to that coffee shop and pick up a free cup of coffee because they advertise to you. So there's something like that. I'm not, I didn't explain it the best I've ever explained it, but that's the basics of it. Uh, another way is uh, if you think about two coffee shops, I like this one. Uh, you have uh, Cafe Rico, which is equitable coffee, and you have McDonald's. And they both want to advertise in the community. They both want to offer the same thing, 50 free cups of coffee. Now it's up to the community to decide uh, the value of those cups of coffee. So they really like Cafe Rico, so they say that those 50 cups are worth 100 units, and they hate McDonald's, so they, they pretty much ban it. They say, we won't accept it at all. We're at zero units. We're not paying you anything. You know, we don't want you in our system at all. So it's up to the community to decide who can interact with them. If they don't believe that the business is in a line with the community, then they have no business advertising within that community. So only they get to select who warrants being on that uh, on their scale. Um, that's one way to make money. Um, yes? You ban everyone. <laughs> then, I mean, in one community, they ban all advertisement, but they ban all advertising. Uh, other ways, I mean, I, I, I don't. I want to, I'm trying to run this in a way that I make the least decisions possible, that I allow the most decisions to be up to the community who's run, who, like each individual community to, to be themselves and to, to be whatever kind of community they want to be. I'm sorry? What defines the community in the space? Yeah, <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> or is it people? Because you can have a community with, you know, very little people. Yeah. And each is a based community. Why not? With, 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 you know, a geographical mm -hmm. portion. 
the city and there's not that many people living there, you know. Whereas if you have a lot of projects, there's like really a lot of like the density of people in, on, on that particular patch is way higher. So it, is, it, it, is it the geographical location or where it's being used? Uh, right now, it's geographical location, and uh, yeah. yeah, so you would just join one of the pre-existing communities. If you try, and, if you say you want to be a member and have no community for you, you pretty much can choose where you think the community should be, and then you have to go and find more people to join that community until it reaches a critical mass, and then that will be another community, and that community will have the opportunity to generate show too. But until until it exists, you're you're just a member floating around in, uh, in space. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not interest based. It's, uh, it's location based. Cause it's really about recreating a village in a city. A village mentality. It's a noble guy. Yeah. 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 I, I I also want to say that well, it doesn't it's fine if it's geographical based because what happens is it's also a value kind of system. So let's say if you work with another open source network that's based somewhere else, California or something. They can share risk with us because they want to be able to catch you. For many papers, it's really small. They can become very local. So if you have, if they have the old local currency, they might be able to lose it, whatever. So um, a lot of things play out. I like the idea of <coughs> sort of crowdfunding the space and giving these. Uh, these uh, limits for use, right? For access to use, projecting to be etc. Yeah. Like resources, whatever, whatever tools, training. Uh, it's a part of the teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why you just do it for no units? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just do it for no units. And then you know, be able to know you. Machines, tools, whatever, they're limited by time. Mm -hmm. So we have a 3D printer. I need to print. You need to print. Fuck, we don't need to print. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how do we divide our time? Well, I have a thing that I have to print that has a lot of parts and it takes a lot of time and it's really big and I'm more important than you. Than you. Yeah. Is your project more <laughs> important than mine? How do we decide who? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? How do we decide who gets what? Yes. However, I bring in a machine. It's a CNC machine. It's not a 3D printer. I need to use a 3D printer. But my machine costs fifty thousand dollars. But I bring it and I let all of you use it. I think I should have the right to use that machine when I need it, right? I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying a lot of people think that way. So if you bring in an initial investment, you put in a lot of effort. You're expecting something in return. Mm -hmm. This is an exchange. I'm giving you a lot. I should be able to, you know, how do you quantify that? Right. You have to be a little bit careful with that gun. It's, it's, yeah. it's a very difficult concept. Okay. 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 Yeah. Come on, we're all here. Look, we're all passionate people. You know? The, the difference is some people do it for money. Fuck. Okay? Some people are passionate. Mm -hmm. Really passionate, right? They love their shit. I love my stuff, man. I'm on it. I don't sleep at night. I don't go out. I'm really on it. And now. I can't get my stuff done because there is no time for that particular machine. And I but you know, at that point, you just buy another one. I mean, then you have, you know, no, but just create a scarcity. This is an extreme example here, but you know what I'm saying, right? It's, it's, it's a reason for usage. 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 Then you just increase your capacity. It should be an equilibrium here. I saw the bit the the before we go uh, like socialize, could I have one of your attention? So what's next for Project B? Remember our timeline, we need to get something out in three weeks. That means it needs to be finalized and out in three weeks. Uh, whether we play around with this idea of crowdfunding through Jotus or through whatever else, there's at least a few things we need to get done. 
Worst one is we need to list some equipment, your project, etc., etc. There's a lot of already a lot of the work that's been done. First thing we need is listing emails. Uh, so <coughs> give us your email addresses, give us your contact. We will send you what needs to be done. Uh, where all the documents are, where all the information are, what's missing. Look we'll for it with something. Another thing is we also are kind of really overworked. So if you would like to help us out and help us coordinate even this kind of initiatives, I would really appreciate it. Uh, if not, you'll still do it. So please do come and help us out. Uh, anything else? We have your card, right? Oh, so I have card. Yeah, I was impressed by his card. I need to talk about that. So, we'll get something else. I mean, the, the, the eventually, I think, doing a meeting about the uh, Constitution. Yes. Yeah. For now, I think it was not yeah. the thing in place until that this is a yeah. work to do. So, I'm just thinking, you guys are taking point on distributing kind of the information and the templates that people need to fill out, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we can send more information. <coughs> Um, but, but before we meet to talk about the Constitution, what we can do, we can go on the Vimeo. You know, there's a decision-making website where you have propose something, discussion, and then have yeah. consensus on the decision. Yeah. So we can already start to dissipate a lot of differences of ideas so there. So complicated. Well, we, I think we would need a little bit of continuity because <coughs> of having some sort of ideas and talking about certain things. Some people will take on governance, some people will take on constitution, some people will take on health funding. Just having the continuity also helps to build relationships and trust, but all the other thing is we will learn. I'm sure we will have different events to attend. We will put this thing on the uh, But teaching and learning, and then you will eventually get there. I think what was important is. Um, right, for more people to know what other people, other groups are, are looking for. And what they can offer. It's an exchange, right? So yeah. when you bring to the table, have value for others, like in our form or whatever we fill yeah. out, what do you feel so that yeah. you have to offer to other people? This can only work if there's a lot of value created. There's a lot of value created by it. For example. Yes. So the first thing to get working I, there, I, everybody I, feels yeah. that it's worth participating. There's always a value created by it. And then I think that the Constitution stuff is more like a second step. Does anyone have a piece of paper that we can use to sort of collect the email addresses? Okay. Anybody want to visit the lab uh, and, and be introduced to what we're doing in the lab? Follow me. Uh, okay. Before you go, email address no please. Email, no tell and, about an email address. Sorry. And second thing, if someone the wants to help us coordinate, communicate, set up all the forums, help us even in the immediate next step, please help us. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and text please text. No. Oh, I mean, like, uh, text yeah. Text yeah. I saw your site. I more time to discuss. So I think you're ready away now. Uh, no. Oh, 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 you've been doing architecture for how long? For 20 years. <laughs> you guys, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I'm on the board. Yes, I heard your site. I'm on the board. Excellent. Oh, I ran out of names. <laughs> so I was lucky to come in and I left And there's no dog in the Oh, and you have this yeah. Sorry, you know this is our Always Oh, our stack is uh, the usual front end with Cloudflex. But we're uh, running Node with Mongo and uh, WebRTC. Uh, WebRTC is very, very, very exciting. You guys have to check it out. Mongo? Mongo's. 
Mongo. <laughs> it, it's, diff it's not different. Would you but, write uh, M O N G O? Okay, the flat, the flat. Uh, right uh, now, it's flat. Mongo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Suggest the name of the Mongo. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, there's too many. Yeah. One is uh, the Mongo. Okay. It's a. Um, <laughs> Okay. And mango is a name? Mongo? Mongo? Mongo is a, 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 it's a flat database okay. uh, that, that complements uh, no quite well. Thank you. Um, Okay. It's, it's picking up steam. No, it's picking up huge. It's huge. Oh, when you look at the amount of packages that have been released in the last four years. We forgot to say, but please suggest a name for our project because we don't have a name. Let's go to our book. That question mark was supposed to ask the book. So suggest a name that comes to you that you would say, and then you'll just send out a list with a potential name or a name. For the name of this entity that we would create over there. It's looking for it's looking to be a competitor in place. Marketers spend hours and days coming up with brands. That's why we crowdsource things. Let's see what other people think, and then you can say, "Oh, if you have an idea, write it down. If you don't, don't write it down." <laughs> Everybody's doing. I think Noodles is hard. S. Michael is there. Yeah. 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 I probably don't even belong here, but only by accident my interest in the I've got a kind of rock around the building is, you know, building is just going to lose the scales very advantageous. Very advantageous. Yeah, very, very good. And then, what, RTC? You know, WebRTC, one of the things we're really using is video conferencing. Uh, but one of the really interesting things about WebRTC is it's now pushed. Uh, it's now pushed. Oh, shoot. Yeah. It's fucking you. What's that doing more than one? I just thought Google. 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 Google.
Um, what exactly I've been thinking about is that I've done a lot of provided a series of tools that allow any conversation you would like to have. Even if you're tired So, and this is the best to test the world to make it happen. So, it could be maybe you want to speak to a doctor. Maybe you want to find people that you can get guitar lessons. Or maybe you want to have Bill Gates debate Linus Torvalds about proprietary versus source. <laughs> And you so, so, yeah, so, right, so there are big, 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 big the restrictions. Like, I don't get any restrictions. 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 I don't get any ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがと
Mais est-ce que c'est ça fine? C'est une question de 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 temps. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose? C'est parce que la CD qui nous a même dit qu'il s'en servait. Oui, ici, il y a un peu de Ici, on est connu sur le fond. Moi, ce que je trouve intéressant, ce que je trouve intéressant, c'est qu'il m'aime que le ministre de la France, il est un peu plus de la France. Il y a une image qui me cache à la terre. Il y a un peu plus de la France. Il y a un peu plus de la France. Non, c'est un peu plus de la France. Et tu as vu que là, hier soir, on a dit on peut commencer à parler de ce qui est fait. On peut donner des traces, on peut acheter de l'équipement, on peut faire des modifications pour faire du bruit de la poussière. Ça va bien, mais il y a un peu de traction pendant qu'il y a un peu de traction. 
Sans vous allez pas tenir pour ça. Ah, ok, je connais. Tu connais, tu connais Mehdi. Oui, oui, je connais très, très bien. Très, très, très bien. Ça m'intéresse beaucoup, voilà. Mais on va en jaser, ça te reste encore Oui, bon, bah, il faut déjà faire des appels. Mais c'est pas la première, ni la dernière. Non, 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 non. Non, 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 moi je c'est pas ma spécialité de parce que je suis au level mais ouais mais c'est plus plus ok toi tu penses c'est plus plus c'est plus plus ouais mais tu penses que C'est le email à job, donc euh, ah, oui, non, mais... non, si tu m'envoies un email à mon travail, dis euh, c'est Guillaumir de ce genre. Tu là, je vais te récailler et je vais te donner mon email personnel. Puis après ça, je vais te renseigner. Ça, c'est qui ça? Guillaumir. Je peux pas entendre. Ah oui? C'est quoi ce que vous avez C'est la première fois que j'ai ici. Il est déjà en deux. C'est tous des ateliers d'artistes. L'autre côté, c'est une CTS. C'est tous des gens qui ont des projets en santé. Mais là, ils ont des gens qui existent. C'est des entreprises qui ont le jardin. Ok, parce que lui, il dit, c'est ça la vie des lacs. Non, mais lui, c'est parce que ça ne tient pas des bureaux ici. Ok. Ça fait qu'ils ont visité leur bureau. Ok. 
Non, 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 non. Moi, j'ai mon propre bureau. Parce que moi, je suis en train de monter un tasse Parce que moi, j'ai beaucoup de relations avec mes Ah ouais? Ça, c'est super intéressant. Le jour où tu as une machine euh, contre le numérique, là, c'est ça, là. Je veux dire, une machine contre le numérique. CNC, là? Ouais. Tout le monde a besoin de ça, là. Je sais. C'est que. La... Ouais, à, la base, euh, à la base, euh, ouais. euh, ouais. euh, ouais. euh, ouais. si tu as ça, tu peux faire. Là, à ce temps, avec les lasers 3D, ça. Ouais, mais c'est pas ça. Tu peux mettre. Moi, euh, j'ai mis du nouveau monde. Que les gens cherchent la bonne justement, c'est de s'amuser à essayer de faire des, 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 des machines qui génèrent de l'énergie. Hein. Ben oui, puis, mais moi, euh, c'est une des raisons pourquoi j'ai failli acheter un immeuble pour monter un centre de recherche en data center pour économiser l'énergie, pour la rendre plus efficiente. Parce que euh, en 2020 à peu près, là, euh, le nombre de personnes de dans le monde. Okay. Ça fait que c'est quand même le marché important. Puis au Québec, on est bien positionné parce que l'énergie est pas chère. Puis les bains, c'est parfois bien les équipements. Oui, oui, c'est juste à cause de Non, mais ça, c'est ça. Regarde, ça nous consiste. Puis aussi, l'autre facteur qui a contribué à ça, c'est le. C'est la nouvelle loi américaine qui fait, parce que sur le sol américain, les Américains ils veulent bien dans tes données comme ils veulent. Que l'État a accès à ça. Il y a eu une décentralisation de tous les gens à l'extérieur des États-Unis pour aller ailleurs que ce que tu veux pour pouvoir être transporté dans ce problème-là. Il y a intérêt à ne pas être trop proche politiquement des États-Unis. Ah, euh, ça, 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 ça. Puis, euh, euh, parce que, non, mais dans le sens, parce que, à partir du moment où est-ce que c'est détenu par une société américaine, tu as, 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 as des actes. Tu sais, exemple, euh, une compagnie américaine avait un data center à Paris, mais les Américains ne peuvent pas être plus dans le data center à Paris. Parce que ça dépend de la personne américaine qui ont accès partout dans le monde. No exception. Mais ça, c'est à l'extrême. Mais ça ne pas un bon Parce que personne n'a que des taux viennent publier dans tes affaires sans te le demander. C'est ce qu'ils ne font pas d'ailleurs. Ouais, c'est ça. J'aime Jamais il serait C'est pour ça que la NSA fait les bâches. Ben c'est ça, c'est ouais, ben sûr que moi, je, je travaille dans le corporate world, tu sais, j'étais l'architecte technologique, j'ai mis en ligne l'espace jeu. C'est quand même un gros projet. Oui, mais c'est ça, c'est qu'à un moment donné, tu dis, regarde, là, tu sais, au début, quand tu dis une compagnie comme tu as des cours, c'est familial, tu te sens bien, là, après ça, ça devient avec ça. Là, c'est. Là, quand tu deviens télégal, là, puis que là, à l'autre bout, c'est super militaire, ben là, tu commences à. C'est ça. Ben, comme moi, je me disais, j'ai bien apprécié le challenge écologique chez mon professeur, mais pour moi, du jeu. C'est mais c'est que... 
Mais tu sais, c'est un monde qui a été en train de Mais il y a moyen de faire des affaires sur la ville. Je trouve que ce projet-là est intéressant à ce niveau-là. Sauf que entre maintenant et d'avenir, avoir tout ça, c'est pas du tout. Oui, mais c'est ça que tu parles de devises, là, tout ça. Non, mais même si tu n'embarques pas sur le plus, je veux dire, chacun a sa valeur de temps, tout le monde contribue à sa façon, puis quand le projet est développé, c'est un peu de juste comme ça, juste mettre ça sur le clé, mettre une structure, une chaîne de ça, que ça fonctionne. Mais par contre, les autres, c'est un génie du nouveau, moi je suis un peu plus compliqué dans les génies du nouveau. Ouais. Puis, mais c'est pas un organisme que je connais. Là, c'est une fondation. Ok. L'idée, c'est que si on part des projets ou des projets, on part de comment on partage. Ouais, c'est ça. Puis, on met le débat est existant. Mettre un système en place qui est fonctionnel, c'est tellement complexe qu'on en est venu à la conclusion que le plus simple, c'est de travailler tout, tout le monde au même prix, ben oui. au même salaire, puis on est basé sur l'intégrité. Ben, c'est pour ça que j'ai jamais rien dit, mais quand on disait, comme on donne la vaut plus que le c'est un, c'est un débat qui fondamental. Euh, ben, oui, dans le vrai monde. Euh, mais quand tu décides que tu te à une communauté, c'est ça, toi, tu vois, on a plus que la Ou que la tienne, oui, plus que la tienne. Nous autres, on a cette idée-là, c'est que tout le monde qui est là, qui le monde qu'on veut aller. Mais il faut que tu sois un peu entre les deux, parce que sinon, tu en perds trop. Non, mais c'est parce que. Premièrement, tu réduis tes troupes. Deuxièmement, tu vis dans ce vrai monde. Tout le monde a ses perceptions. Tu sais, je veux dire, ben, tu sais, c'est la même chose qu'on dit. L'exemple qu'on a choisi de donner, si moi j'ai mis une CNC qui vaut 50 000, oui, c'est un bon, c'est bon exemple. puis moi je viens d'avoir un contrat, puis si je ne traîne pas demain mes pièces, là, je vais perdre ma job, là, parce que je vais perdre mon contrat que je viens d'avoir. Mais c'est qui qui décide? Il y a une pression. Tu sais, il y a une pression. Moi, j'ai investi 50 000 que j'ai donné à la communauté, j'ai mis mon outil, puis je la prête. Bon, c'est sûr, je la garde pour moi une partie du temps, mais je peux donner du temps. Mais là, qu'est-ce qui décide qui a accès à quoi? Puis là, tu sais, comme on dit, on en ajoute un deuxième. Si l'argent n'est pas là, on n'en ajoute pas un deuxième. Tu sais, tout. Puis, un moment donné, j'ai un million, je peux pas acheter 2 millions d'équipements, je peux pas acheter juste un comme moi je disais, on ne peut pas participer à l'Union Factuelle. Parce que, moi, par exemple, je suis sûr que dans un autre position, ça aurait été intéressant de participer parce qu'on achetait ça. Il y en a qui ont acheté Java, ils ont acheté Solaris, ils ont acheté MySQL, ils ont acheté bien de Open Source. Mais en même temps, on connaît. Les autres ne sont pas Open Source. Ça coûte cher. Ça coûte cher. Non, non, mais c'est parce que l'auto, c'est un chien. Oui, il y a une version de la version. Oui, oui, je le sais. Ça s'appelle un autre nom. Oui, un rack avait une autre affaire qui est là-dessus, de base. Je pense que c'est pas tantôt qu'il a posé la question. Je pense que c'est pas tantôt qu'il a posé je n'ai pas, j'ai pas penché là-dessus parce que c'est un débat philosophique qui peut durer des, ben c'est pour ça. des jours. Tu sais, ce que je disais, il faut faire des commissions. Si pendant la fin, on va parler pendant 20 ans, puis il n'y aura pas de solution. Il ouais. faut que tu divises pour organiser. Après ça, le monde, tu, sais, tu peux dire, OK, là, tout le monde participe à cette communauté-là pour finaliser ça. Mais ça peut prendre 2, 3, 4, 5 millions. Puis c'est tout le temps comme ça. Là. Tu sais, je veux dire, avoir un consensus, c'est pas évident. <rire> Puis de faire que personne ne se sent lésé mm. là-dedans. Mm. Tu sais, à un moment donné, euh, j'ai pas le goût de donner, changer. Puis, comment, tu sais, comment tu vas te faire fonctionner? Puis, en même temps, je sais pas, moi, sur les 50 projets que je Centre-Uni, il y a deux spin-offs qui sont absolument hallucinants. Mais pourquoi ces spin-offs-là n'auraient pas une rétribution à l'ensemble? À l'ensemble. Parce que... Tu ne sais pas d'avance c'est quoi qui va être la Mais non, tu ne sais pas. Tu, sais pas tu peux développer cinq projets, puis celui que tu penses qui va être ton winner, il va perdre. 
Puis celui que tu penses qui va être ton user, oh, oui, ton oui, oui, parce qu'il y a une conjoncture qui vient de changer. Parce que juste c'est regarder c'est les produits de consommation, ben les, ouais. les choses les plus inutiles, aberrantes, et des fois, c'est des ouais. succès commerciaux ouais. fantastiques. Alors, ouais. les produits super utiles, ouais, ouais. pour ces tablettes, et ça fait que... Qu'est-ce qui va te rapporter de l'argent, tu ne sais pas. Non, c'est peut-être la niaiserie la plus inutile qui existe. C'est que ça. Moi, j'ai vu des compagnies faire des produits hallucinants. Ouais. Ils sortent une nouvelle version, c'est de la crise de mort. C'est quoi? Puis, ça prend une pause, mais il y avait un super produit. Puis là, ils ont décidé de le faire meilleur, puis finalement, ils font pire. <rire> puis là, le monde débarque de tout ça. Mm-hmm. Moi, je l'ai vu, euh, parce que j'étais en production longtemps. Tu sais, euh, tu achetais un, un effet où tu, 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 tu payais 30-40 euros pour ton appareil. Là. Puis euh, deux mois après, tu écris ça dans la poubelle parce qu'il vient d'avoir quelque chose de sorti. Puis ça va être plus gros. C'était ça la réalité. Il mm-hmm. fallait que tu acceptes. Mmh. Ouais, c'est ça. Mais c'est la même chose. Tu sais, comme là, Microsoft vient de changer ses licences. Avant, il était perpétuel. À ce temps, il y aura une durée de vie. Un an, deux ans, trois ans, ça dépend de son temps. Ah ouais? Ben oui. Tu achètes un. Au niveau, pas individu, au niveau entreprise. Ok. okay. Fait que là, pourquoi ils ont fait ça? Parce qu'ils veulent vendre un fils pour 65. J'ai un client. Ils veulent vendre quoi, tu dis? Un fils pour 65. Okay. J'ai un client, il vient de monter un exchange, j'ai installé son exchange. Là, il commence à bien être même, là. Ils vont ça va être Linux. Non, parce que tout le monde a ça. Tu sais, moi, quand j'ai une chat, la suite va voir que Linux fonctionne bien. Regarde, là, j'ai passé une entrevue pour un vendeur chez Hydro-Québec. Là. Ils ont 25 000 XP à changer. 25 000! Pourquoi qu'ils ne vont pas à Linux? Il n'y a rien que Linux pour te faire. Ben oui, mais... Mais même à Linux, ça fait Windows ou je ne sais pas. Non, c'est, non, c'est, c'est parce que toute l'industrie commerciale est basée là-dessus. Ça n'arrêtera pas. Si j'ai des choses Moi, j'ai de la misère à comprendre. Tu sais, c'est comme Visual Studio. Oui, mais si je te dis que tout de suite, là, là... Oui, mais Visual Studio, oui, c'est un beau Oui, mais avant... C'est juste du Microsoft. À ça, je peux faire du oui, fil, je, je peux faire n'importe quoi dedans. Oui, il va supporter tout mon code. Ah, oui. Puis il va supporter les versions. Mais avant, Microsoft il était fermé. Oui. Là, à ce temps, dans le système Sunday, je comme, avant, je pouvais juste déployer du Windows. Là, il est encore centré Windows, mais là, ils ont fait un plugin Linux puis Unix. Ça commence. Ils vont pas des apps, ils vont pas de rien. Mais c'est un début. Microsoft il était fermé avant. Oui, oui. Là, ils sont tous là. Ils l'ont fait avec euh, Team Foundation, c'est un vrai Life Cycle Management. C'est vrai, une suite Visual Studio complète. Mais avant, euh, Visual Studio Premium, euh, Ultimate, tu pouvais l'avoir dans ton, euh, dans ton package euh, Premium. Là, ce il est juste dans l'Ultimate. Mais ça coûte 30 000 par année être là. Mm-hmm. Tu sais, là, ils, tu sais, ils sont tous en train de changer le modèle. Là. Tu sais, c'est comme la banque, hein? La banque, elle ne finance pas si ta business, elle existe depuis un an ou deux. Mm-hmm. Mais tu vas où? La CEDEC a dit qu'elle fait ça, mais elle fait pas. Dans les fêtes, moi, j'ai déposé un projet, puis c'est ridicule. Là. Trois réunions, on est parti pour ça, un pourcentage de je ne sais pas combien. Là. Elle n'est même pas capable de me dire le pourcentage de qu'est-ce qu'elle va mettre. Mais elle est capable de me dire combien moins il faut que je mette par exemple. Mm-hmm. Ça n'a aucun sens, c'est ça. Puis c'est pour ça, tu sais, tout ça, ça prend du temps, puis euh, avant que tout le monde se comprenne, il y a le même temps. Puis tout le monde a sa business à rien. Tu sais, on n'est pas rendu. Mais l'initiative est intéressante, c'est pour ça que tout le monde est là. Oh oui, non, mais ça va évoluer. Tu sais, il y a un intérêt du monde de faire ça. Moi, moi j'ai, j'ai confiance. Je pense que l'open source, c'est ce qui va sauver la vie. C'est même, c'est, c'est... C'est un bon cheval de toi. Tu sais, moi, euh, tu sais, exemple, au Québec, quand on a monté ce port de jeu, j'ai tout monté sur la date. Sur la date. La date, c'est une version Linux. La date, c'est une version Linux. Ah, okay. Tu sais. Ouais. Mais pourquoi les entrepres sont mis à utiliser la date C'est parce qu'ils faisaient des packages stars. Ouais. Donc, c'est bien important pour une entreprise. Hein. Tu sais, moi, euh, mon jeu en ligne, là, le, s'il plante un heure, là, ça me coûte des millions de dollars. Ça fait qu'il ne faut pas qu'il plante. 
Ouais. Ouais. Puis c'est tout stateless. J'ai monté six colonnes, trois dans un site, trois dans un autre, puis je peux rouler mes colonnes comme je veux, parce que je peux faire mes upgrades quand je veux. C'est tout scripté. J'ai exactement le même résultat tout le temps. J'ai aucune donnée dedans. Il y a une colonne qui me fait du trouble. Je la scrape. Si tu voulais voir Mais ça a tout été monté comme ça, mais ça a tout été monté en Linux. C'est la même chose du BM, web Il y a un des produits qui va en aucun prix aux autres aussi. C'est IBM et Microsoft, c'est à peu près le même Il y a RAC aussi. RAC, je pense, c'est le pied de la guerre. Ok. Parce que lui, je veux dire, c'est lui qui fait le plus de cash à planète. Ah oui? Ah oui, c'est Larry Olson. Hein? Larry Olson, le président de RAC, c'est un des plus riches à planète. Parce que RAC. Euh... Oh oui, c'est la base de données, c'est, c'est, c'est ce qui est le plus euh, utilisé. utilisé c'est, c'est, mais en même temps, euh, c'est, 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 c'est comme avant, il n'y avait pas de virtualisation. Si tu payais au CPU ou ouais, à la machine, là, il y a une virtualisation au coin, au CPU, euh, le nombre de users, tu ramasses du cash ou du peu. Mm-hmm. Parce que avant, c'était le CPU, ils ont passé ils ont dit non, le nombre de coins. Mmh. 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 Puis là, en même temps, mais ceux qui ont resté avec le CPU, ben là, au début j'avais 4 cores, mais là j'en ai 12 cores. Hein. Fait que... C'est pas juste. Hein. C'est 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 fait que là, tout le monde s'ajuste. Tu ajustes ton système de, de coût. Fait que tout le monde s'ajuste dans le marché. Okay. Mais tu sais, on ne changera pas le marché informatique. Ça roule. Là. Mais il y a des choses extraordinaires à faire. Mais vous autres, ça fait combien de temps ça existe? Sept ans. Ah oui, quand même. Sept ans, puis c'est, ça roule. Euh, moi, ça fait depuis, 2000, depuis euh, juin 2010 que je connais. Que j'étais dans la première réunion. OK. Et, euh, puis depuis ce temps-là, tu étais impliqué dedans. Ben, ça fait, je peux dire, ça fait trois ans que je suis mal. Euh, Allô, là. Plaisir. Bonne journée. Après, à part 2011, je peux dire, je me suis commencé à... À vraiment t'investir. Ouais. Ouais. Ben, c'est sûr, ça prend des moyens alternatifs, parce que le système économique, il est fait qu'il euh, bénéficie juste aux gens qui ont de l'argent. Oui, oui. Si tu n'as pas d'argent, t'es hâte. C'est, 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 un, c'est, une, c'est un repère à nous, hein, ouais, ouais, ouais. à tous les niveaux. Non, non, puis... Même ouais. monter des business, euh, faire des affaires, euh, si tu pas d'argent de départ, tu n'as pas rien. Ouais. Ouais, ouais, Puis euh, on coupe les capitaux partout. Mm. On ne veut pas te donner accès. T'sais, regarde les banques, ils déclarent 300 millions de profits euh, il y a 10 ans. Mais là, ils sont rendus qu'ils déclarent plus ça à l'année, ils déclarent ça au quarter parce qu'ils dépassent le milliard. Mm. Ils sont rendus à 900 millions là, mm. par quarter. Mm. Puis ils ne veulent pas faire de prêt au démarrage. Mm. Alors que.